Welcome to your UA Light Celestial Insight. Welcome to the 2023 eclipse season and to your 2023 eclipse season guide filled with collective and personal astrology breakdowns, horoscopes, and channeled divine wisdom through the tarot about the two new moon solar eclipses and two full moon lunar eclipses of the year 2023. We'll review how all four eclipses could impact you personally according to your zodiac sign and where they take place in your chart. And we'll go over some psychic spiritual guidance in the form of channeled angel number messages and tarot insight on what may be resolving or coming to a close for you and what blessed new beginnings could be sparked for you related to these eclipses. So subscribe to the channel and like this video. And let's get into your UA Light Celestial Insight. First, let's recap what these lunar phenomena are. New moons occur when both the sun and the moon conjunct or meet each other in their orbits, typically around the eve of the sun moving into a new sign and us beginning a new zodiac season. And this is why they mystically mark a 30-day portal for spiritual manifestation and new beginnings. Full moons occur when the sun and the moon oppose each other while located in opposite sister zodiac signs. So the full moon is a product of the moon being fully illuminated by the sun while across from each other. And so just like the sun opposes the moon and exposes this otherwise dark side of the moon because they are stationed in sister zodiac signs that oppose and mirror each other, this opposition, as we call it in astrology, is also about illuminating the esoteric teachings, the shadow lessons, and the tensions of these signs being mirroring similar opposites. And so during full moons, similarly, our subconscious fears are illuminated, emotions are stirred, and sometimes tensions occur and even reach a boiling point in our lives for us to examine, resolve, and bring closure to something. And the things that we feel and experience often correspond to the thematic character of these sister zodiac signs being at odds or opposition, and the corresponding energetic themes and lessons we are essentially being asked to master in an area of our life for our soul to evolve and for us to experience more growth and ease. And so if you didn't know, in astrology, oppositions give us these things to work through, and they present us problems that give us opportunities to do shadow work and integrate spiritual lessons. So let's also quickly review the meaning of eclipses and the lunar nodes, specifically the lunar nodes for this year that essentially correspond with the eclipses. So for this 2023 eclipse season, which begins on April 20th, Themes and lessons of the Aries and Libra polarities in the Taurus and Scorpio polarities are highlighted and may affect areas of your life according to where you have Aries and Libra and Taurus and Scorpio located in your natal houses. On a sort of scientific and esoteric level, eclipses are thought of as essentially upping the ante of the full moon, right? Because they are rarer, happening about four to seven times a year, and because the energy is thought to be amplified and more concentrated, right? Sparking these six months and more of changes because eclipses essentially occur along the lunar node points where the sun, the moon, and the earth all line up in a way that creates these cosmic scale color and shadow shows in the sky. That's the sort of easiest way to explain it. 
And these new moon solar eclipses happen during a new moon phase when the moon is essentially located between the sun and the earth and blocks the sun from our view on earth. And so during a full moon lunar eclipse, the earth is positioned between the moon and the sun where the earth's shadow actually obscures the moon. And so we don't see moonlight. However, the sunlight passes through Earth and it reflects some wavelengths of light onto the moon. And this ends up turning the moon, these striking red, orange colors, over the course of a few hours. Eclipses generally happen in a consecutive set corresponding to the lunar nodes. For example, an Aries new moon being followed two weeks later by a Libra full moon, its sister sign. And sometimes these consecutive new and full moon eclipse sets happen in a series of three, like the Taurus Scorpio series, and where they mostly occur within the seasons that correspond to where the lunar nodes actually are. But not always, and this year is an example. For our 2023 eclipse season, our four eclipses include the first set of eclipses along the Aries-Libra axis, manifesting as both of the new moon eclipses for the year that will happen six months apart as opposed to consecutive new and full moon pairs, right? And then the final set of eclipses in the Taurus-Scorpio series of eclipses that began in 2022, happening as both of the full moon eclipses of the year, also six months apart, as opposed to being consecutive new and full moon pairs. And so this year is an example of when eclipses are not neatly grouped together in their sister pairs along their um, axes this year, as you can see. But given that the lessons and themes of the Aries and Libra polarity and the Taurus Scorpio polarity are generally really similar, and given that both Aries and Scorpio are ruled by Mars, while Taurus and Libra are both ruled by Venus, this actually lends to a really neatly aligned journey of bringing long-awaited and complementary sort of closures, resolves, and positive new beginnings related to the issues of personal identity and personal authority, and then money and relationship dynamics that may have been ongoing in your life for many years. This year's eclipse season really plays a role in this much larger cosmic decree, right? To do a sort of final purge to remove blocks and toxicity and to really revolutionize and realign dynamics of power, money, the economy, and relationships, courtesy of so many big planetary shifts, right? Like the end of the long Saturnian age with Saturn's move into Pisces, Pluto's move into Aquarius, and Jupiter's move through Aries and Taurus beginning next month, right? Which you can learn about by checking out the videos on this channel and in the description box below. But yes, this eclipse season is all about bringing long-awaited closure and resolve to issues related to personal identity, personal authority, and deep healing, and how these affect your independence, your money, asset, and relationship dynamics in your life dynamics that may have been ongoing in your life for over a year or even 10 to 15 years, right? And specifically um, in the areas of your life aligned to where Taurus and Scorpio align in your chart. And again, this is particularly because both full moon lunar eclipses of the year 
happen in these fixed signs, Taurus and Scorpio, while new beginnings will be happening in the areas of your life aligned to where the Aries and Libra axis is in your chart, since both the 2023 new moon eclipses will happen in these signs. And in general, Aries and Libra energies are all about bringing newness, positive personal transformation and independence, karmic personal victories, right? And harmonious and mutually beneficial relationships. Both the polarities of Aries and Libra and then Taurus versus Scorpio center on these lessons of how your self-awareness, your personal authority, your values, ethics, and self-worth shape your net worth, your investments, and commitments. It's really all about fairness dynamics, personal values, and the valuables within relationships. So the emotional and ethical values that inform or inspire the relationships and the shared values and assets and valuables that cohere the relationship. And then how reciprocity, fairness, and harmony are maintained. And when we break that down even more, of course, the emotional and ethical values and maturity of individuals have a direct effect on how reciprocity, fairness, harmony, and healthy interdependence are shaped and maintained related to the emotions and the assets and relationships. And further, the emotional and ethical values of individuals and healthy interdependency are all shaped by each person's sense of self-worth, their empowerment, confidence and self-security or insecurity, right? And also attachment styles that are informed by core wounds that may or may not be healed, right, from relationships and familial history. And so that's a really condensed but concise deep dive into the shadow work of it all. And so much of the astrology for the last 5 to 15 years, honestly, and especially these last few months has been about bringing us to this moment in time of mass awakening, rethinking and healing of core conditioning so that collectively we can really recognize all of the ways that lovelessness, lack, codependency and enmeshment patterns and unfair power dynamics are really sort of encouraged and enforced in every layer of society and truly in our closest relationships. And so these degrees and these particular lessons have been activated by the past Taurus and Scorpio eclipses and um, also the recent Aries and Libra moons as well and also Saturn and Pluto, right? these big transits that have all been about these tensions of achieving healthy interdependency and cooperation for our collective highest destiny, right? And how that requires different negotiations of putting the self first versus the collective for some people and then vice versa for others, right? It's also about how that may require breaking free from toxic groupthink and forced and enforced toxic codependencies and group alliances and enmeshment patterns in family and any other group affiliations and relationships so that you move forward recognizing people multidimensionally and forming relationships based on core shared values and you know working towards these light filled legacies and these new ways of being independent and free. And so these polarities are all about causing us to question our senses of emotional, material, and financial means of security and to really face concerns about choosing oneself and 
transforming personal worth into material worth without fear of what you're losing by walking away from any shared resources or communities and relationships where it's just full of risk actually it's full of toxicity or lovelessness and codependency or unfairness and abuse all due to the ways that we've been conditioned to to sort of accept the appearance of it being a more grounded and financially secure choice, right? The more comfortable and safe choice, despite all of these things, right? And so it's about the faults of that sort of conditioning, right? And really, really, really doing a deep purge. And for others, right? It's also about, you know, the faults of even over-identifying with you know, money and ambitions and these sort of external notions of success while perhaps neglecting spiritual growth and understanding. And so these eclipses are truly, and it's one eleven on the clock while I'm saying this here, uh, as I just looked up, it's about bringing everything into balance. And it's truly about the ways that we have to know ourselves deeply to connect healthily with others. And yeah, even in terms of thinking about how all of these major aspects of the organization of society and civilization are like being transformed right now in relationship to these really huge transits, right? Like government, the economy, everything, everything is in a state of transformation and emergence and all of that transformation will take shape and can take shape in some really incredible ways but that is all dependent on how healed we are as individuals to be able to create a more healthy and sustainable societal structure of interdependency versus the one that we have now that is so full of all of these um, uneven, unfair, and unhealthy sort of relational and um, financial power dynamics, right? So enough of my spiel, right? But generally, right, this is truly, truly a time that is about healing deeply enough to know your inner values, to make choices that are aligned with those values, even if that means retreating from relationships that you've been accustomed to and risking aloneness um, and any sort of uh, relinquishing of any shared mutual resources in those relationships based on the unhealthy dynamics, right? Um, so that you can then be healed enough to attract and maintain powerful new faded connections and relationships with the people who are more aligned with your values and your long-term goals. And again, the ways that um, both of the new moons are aligned with the Aries and Libra um, zodiac signs, while the full moons are aligned with the medicine of the Taurus and Scorpio zodiac signs, is truly about making clean breaks, about um, taking perhaps temporary losses, right, for long-term and fundamentally more harmonious and positive um, gains, right, that are in alignment with your highest destiny. And in general, eclipse portals are truly these times of opportunity for release, for reclamation, and rebirthing. And an eclipse portal is around the time of the grouping of eclipses, right? And so, as I mentioned, it's about a six-month-plus 
period of time where the eclipses often spark these abrupt new beginnings or closures of certain chapters. They spark changes that have this six month plus sort of butterfly effect of unfoldment <laughs> and or where they spark changes that just have fundamental deep long term or life changing impact. And from the dates above, you can see that the current, um, the Aries new moon and then the full moon eclipse, those are two weeks apart. And then the next set happens approximately six months later, right, in line with this portal duration. And so before offering, going into our specific horoscope and channeled spiritual guidance around how these eclipses may be impacting your personal experience this year based on your zodiac sign, let's briefly review a channeled angel number message that I got for the collective and then also the collective eclipse astrology predictions that are pretty short and sweet. The channel, the angel number wisdom that came through for the collective is the number 1155. And this is a number that is a combination of two um, master numbers, essentially, that are related to new creation, innovation, and change, right? So we have uh, number one, which is all about new beginnings, and 11 being this sort of portal that is truly about new beginnings and inner strength and um, creating our realities with our thoughts, our beliefs, and actions, and stepping into the new, while five and the number 55 is truly about, you know, major life changes, you know, being again at a sort of portal of change that is related to you making these brave choices related to seeking your personal freedom and um, following your passions and your life purpose and truly serving your soul mission. And so angel number 1155 says to stick with your convictions and do not allow others to deter or hinder you in any way once you have made your final choice or decision. Only you know your true heart's desires and calling. Listen to your own intuition and look to new directions and opportunities with an open mind and heart. Angel number 1155 is a message to take charge of your own life, do things your own way, and make positive life changes to benefit yourself and those around you. Although you may fear the unknown, your angels ask that you trust these changes will be to your long-term benefit and advantage. Stay positive and optimistic about these impending changes and you will find that all will go smoothly. This angel number suggests that the timing is right to take on a new venture, project, and or direction and way of being and a happy outcome and results will follow your positive expectations. You deserve some positive change to take place in your life. And this number encourages you to have the courage to be true to yourself and your life, your passions, and purpose. So this was the channeled angel number that came through for the collective. And it absolutely aligns generally with the sort of lessons of these particular uh, zodiac signs and their polarities. And also with the particular wisdoms that are um, sort of being activated in relationship to all of the individual eclipse astrology aspects. So let's briefly run down what each eclipse actually means and what sort of astrological predictions could be associated with them. It is so incredible the ways that the channeled angel number sort of cosmic wisdom from the divine aligns with the true uh, sort of message of the Aries new moon solar eclipse that kicked off our 2023 eclipse season. And this Aries new moon total solar eclipse 
is truly about cranking up this uh, this sort of um, energy of forcing us to walk through this portal of change, right? And um, it was a rare lunar phenomena, truly, on so many different accounts, right? So it was considered a rare astrology phenomena because this eclipse was the second consecutive new moon in Aries following the previous new moon um, that was also in Aries on March 21st. So this made this new moon solar total eclipse a black moon. And black moons are considered auspicious, you know, sort of omens. And really a message to truly heed any lessons particular to a sign and to the astrology of an eclipse. While, you know, an eclipse is already like a sort of moon on steroids, right? And so everything is just amplified, emphasized all the more, right? Um, this message about new beginnings. And it is also emphasized by the fact that both of the new moons occurred at critical degrees. So the March 21st new moon fell on the zero degree. Again, all about this new energy and transformation related to identity, personal power, just everything and, and it being a portal, right? And then the um, Aries new moon solar total eclipse fell at the 29 critical degree, the last critical degree of Aries as well. And so the two essentially bookended you know, airy season, right? And this sort of hybrid scenario is really uncommon and it's something that hasn't occurred since uh, 2005 and it's, it won't happen again until 2041. It's weird to even say that number, but um, the major medicine of this Aries moon, uh, this eclipse, is really to take action on important initiatives pertinent to solidifying your independence. And it's all about taking your self-healing and understanding and um, also understanding and protection of your identity to a new level. And... Um, Particularly the part about understanding and protecting your identity, that is critical given that the um, astrology of this Aries new moon solar eclipse included the Aries sun, the moon, and Jupiter and the north node all being conjunct and square Pluto in Aquarius. And this Pluto in Aquarius transit is all about um, our relationship to the internet and protecting identity um, and cybersecurity. And then the Aries sign in general is also about identity. And so I'm definitely taking this again as a message to heed all of the talk, all of the um, sort of news and world events that you're seeing and witnessing related to um, cyber crimes, um, hackers, and um, personal identifying information and secured documents being leaked online. Like I'm getting that very clearly, right? <laughs> All right. And so additionally, um, the theme um, for that Aries new moon total solar eclipse is also about embodied wisdom for aligned action and future fortune. That is the sort of condensed theme and wisdom um, and medicine of this new moon. And with that, it's like this new moon is essentially sparking, you know, a sort of six month plus portal. Um, of receiving strong intuitive knowledge to really help deepen your healing and your higher understanding of yourself, uh, of your purpose, and uh, to deepen your relationship with the divine. And um, this could also have been experienced um, in terms of like just the sort of abrupt and immediate effect of this. It could have been experienced um, by the fire signs in particular, Aries, uh, Leos, and uh, Sagittarius uh, ruled folks as this uh, really strange and unexpected uh, occurrence of lethargy 
like just all of a sudden having had no energy around this time of the eclipse like from april 20th through through now even right um dealing with trying to find the physical energy actually having had a sort of physiological um response to the fact that the sun's vital energy was obscured right during this eclipse at a time where um intuitive energies and sensitivity um is heightening for people uh, who are fire signs right and so yeah i have to say i experienced this personally it is absolutely a part of the reason why this video is being published after the first eclipse right um but still in divine timing right um that is the sort of personal and experiential knowledge that i can share and and sort of confirm about the ways that this eclipse is um having physiological but also spiritual and just other sort of material effects right and so this eclipse is also about sparking a sort of season where um in addition to receiving strong intuitive knowledge and even sort of like physical um sort of like mystical experiences is going to be a time of receiving helpful resources to resolve practical affairs and plan and protect your future. So you can experience this related to um receiving helpful knowledge and even connections, you know that um pop up to help you with any sort of practical things and any plans that you are making. right and so let's move on to the scorpio full moon lunar eclipse so the scorpio full moon lunar eclipse is going to be happening on may 5th and this sort of major a uh, theme and sort of wisdom or medicine of this full moon is about tests of spirit strength maturity and character right and how tests related to all of these things um you know are ultimately for your higher good and this may and given that this is the sort of last scorpio full moon lunar eclipse out of the set it will absolutely be about you experiencing a sort of liberating end to maybe some difficult karmic chapters things that have been <clears throat> excuse me ongoing for a very 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 long time um and that perhaps manifesting as like uh victories in some area or you again related to the Aries a uh, new moon eclipse you beginning to get the sort of information help synchronistic events um information whatever it is that also helps you to bring a final end to some sort of difficult karmic chapter in your life um maybe related to um course completions graduations uh promotions ending and beginning a uh financial cycle um and cutting cords you know in uh certain long standing relationships or particular kinds of relationship dynamics that have perhaps been these sort of repeating cycles in your life okay and these things are these areas in your life having you know been tests of your spirit your strength your maturity and your character right and you having survived that you getting to this point now where you're able to understand from a higher perspective how many of these things were for your higher good now given that uh this full moon is uh composed of the Taurus sun, Uranus and Mercury retrograde all being in conjunction and then in opposition to the moon in Scorpio, right? Um it also could mean things like surprising expenses or payouts, um surprising reversals in certain decisions, surprising news, um 
surprises or changes uh, or even resolves to any travel plans that you've been trying to make um, or even receiving info um, in general that is surprising that could be of a positive and or negative nature, right? So when you have uh, Scorpio in the mix, <laughs> this could definitely mean a sort of light on sort of taboo things or news or legal issues related to loss, theft, betrayal or vengeance, um, maybe security issues, whether it's cyber security issues or even in real life in terms of like loss and theft and betrayal, like, you know, loss in relationships. It could also uh, shine a light on, on any uh, things related to like private investigations, um, whether it's your own personal research into things of the occult or anything like that. Um, you finding hidden information or you even being involved in uh, having it in a private investigator and maybe beginning or ending that investigation, right, related to some sort of security issue. You could also highlight issues of abuse, um, issues related to health or health care um, or criminality and scandals, right? That could be of a sexual, financial, or spiritual nature, right? These are some of the overarching sort of scenarios that often are aligned with this Taurus and Scorpio polarity, particularly a Scorpio full moon, right? Okay, and so in terms of, you know, just the lessons of all of this, it is just definitely going to be this mix of, you know, a liberating into difficult karmic chapters or certain things being revealed and you being able to take action to bring something to an end, right? Or to a close, um, to end some sort of difficulty or problem solve something related to some kind of adversity, right? And uh, again, for many of you, having survived, reaching a point where you are seeing an end to a long cycle of having experienced adversity. So these will essentially be the primary themes, uh, scenarios, and events that perhaps unfold for you in certain areas of your life. Um, during this sort of six month portal between this first set of eclipses until we begin the next set of eclipses in October. So whereas the first set of eclipses really sort of focused on things that you will be, um, ending in terms of relationships and things that you will be beginning in your own personal best self interest, the set of eclipses for October um, will very much be about more um, beginnings in more successful and harmoniously aligned partnerships, being able to see um, kindness, care, compassion, and uh, finances repaid in kind in relationship to you having survived adversity, right? And ended a long karmic chapter of some sort of difficulty. And um, beginning to see reward from any ventures um, that you began, um, being able to have an expanded understanding and view of your potential through partnership, through creativity, and a sort of newfound confidence that you have um, in whatever it is that you do, in however it is that you sort of inhabit the world um, and feel confident in your own sort of like self-identity um, and ways of presenting and relating unto others personally, romantically, and professionally, right? So that is really what the second set of eclipses in October are really about and how they sort of relate to the new moons and the full moons um, that begin the year. 
On October 14th, we have our Libra New Moon annular solar eclipse. And an annular solar eclipse is essentially that new moon solar eclipse when you perhaps see the ring of fire right around the moon as the moon um, covers almost the entirety of the sun, right? And that sort of fiery ring is exposed. And this new moon solar eclipse is happening at 21 degrees of Libra. And it is about sparking this period of time in your life where you may perhaps start to experience a simple and softer side of life, right? Related to um, there being all of this sort of Venusian energy truly amplified by the astrology, a time where you will see kindness, care, and compassion, and charm, um, and even financial reward, you know, sort of repaid and kind in your life. And you begin to experience a sort of charmed life. <laughs> and, um, where you're able to see um, your sort of expanded potential through uh, partnerships and through creativity and you sort of embodying a sort of newfound confidence, right? And whatever it is that you do and a newfound confidence in the ways that you inhabit the world in terms of like your personal identity, your um, aesthetics, your relationship to self-care and beauty, how much you take care of yourself, how you present yourself and how you relate to others in the world. And this is absolutely based on the astrology. This new moon eclipse is composed of the Libra sun, moon and Mercury all being in conjunction with each other. And in conjunction with some lucky fixed stars in the cosmos that are related to um, prosperity from work, right? Um, and leadership and creative power and wealth, fame, honor, glamour. And so this is absolutely about um, charm, and connection essentially being the currencies of success, right? And so this means that you will absolutely begin to align and find more faded and harmonious partnerships in all areas of your life, um, personally, maybe romantically, but absolutely um, in terms of business relationships and contracts in a time where these sort of um, Venusian and even luxury industries will be seeing a big boom, right? And where people in those industries will be experiencing success in their ventures, any ventures related to the helping professions, health, wellness, compassion, care, um, unique and authentic creative expression, right? Beauty, and even astrology. Now, I definitely don't want to, um, under acknowledge the fact that eclipses can also bring crises, right? Um, that require, um, you know, crisis management first before perhaps experiencing these things. So it also could be that, um, you, people in these industries experience some kind of crisis as well. Jupiter is going to be moving through Taurus at this time, and there's a lot of complexity to this transit. And so you can definitely look at the Jupiter and Taurus video that is releasing here on this channel as well for more information. But Again, it could absolutely be a time where maybe there are um, crises or issues that in these industries that uh, people have to uh, problem solve, right, and uh, try to rebound from. Um, but again, that also ultimately leading to some sort of... Um, Something positive, right? In terms of leadership ability, leadership qualities being enhanced, um, you getting some sort of divine wisdom that helps you to also create something new, right? 
be resourceful, be inventive, um, and be able to tap into your creative and entrepreneurial um, and, and collaborative leadership power, right? Um, these are some of the things that are um, sort of brought to the surface because, again, with the Libra uh, placements, all of this is going to be in opposition to the Aries, right? Uh, the Aries uh, fixed stars and um, degrees related to the degree of the full moon as well, right? And so, Again, it could be a mix of things, but ultimately it is overwhelmingly positive, right? In terms of from this point, <laughs> there uh, being a six month enfoldment um, of then being able to see the reward and some sort of positive resolve, right? And in, in these areas. And on the 28th, again, we have that Taurus full moon lunar eclipse. And the particular sort of lessons and cosmic wisdoms of the degrees and everything that are being activated with this eclipse, it is also sort of honing in on this sort of message around, you know, having a growth mindset um, and a sort of gratitude for the grit and the gains of overcoming loss, purging, right? And, um, kind of doing away with any attachments, right? And coming into this period of balance and being in touch with your ambition, your integrity and, you know, achievement, right? Seeing achievement, having your mind set on certain achievements and being able to see the path towards certain achievements, right? And, you know, because this is the final eclipse in the Taurus and Scorpio series, it is absolutely going to be about um, financial matters and uh, any sort of relationship matters um, being sort of emphasized, maybe even escalating and reaching a boiling point. Um, but Jupiter is in the mix here, right? And Jupiter is essentially conjunct the Taurus moon, which is absolutely bringing a bit of positivity and an ability to find wisdom, you know, inspiration and some, uh, either, you know, sort of like resolve and appreciation and even reward for whatever it is that uh, comes up to the surface to be resolved, right? This could absolutely be a time where people are uh, clearing debt, <laughs> where people are um, making long-term plans for travel and relocation. Um, this could absolutely be a time where perhaps uh, people are reaching a sort of threshold in any sort of like academic ventures. I'm thinking about the fact that Jupiter is related to education and uh, Taurus is connected to the Hierophant, which is also related to wisdom and higher education um, and, and mentorship and just higher knowledge in some way, right? Any of these sorts of uh, themes and scenarios could be up for a resolve, but this is definitely a sort of critical threshold in this sort of long, long cycle of cutting ties with the past, right? And coming to terms with, you know, the sort of higher lessons, the rewards, you know, and the gains of having experienced and, and overcome certain losses, right? And um, this could absolutely be a time where because Saturn is in the mix here, the Scorpio sun, Mercury, and Mars are all going to be conjunct each other and then trining Saturn and Pisces. So if there are any sort of like legal, financial, institutional, bureaucratic matters, this is also a time too where you might find um, some sort of resolve and relief through the help of some sort of like figure, right? Whether it's a judge, whether it is uh someone 
who has some sort of like official uh, or, or leadership or title or, or position of authority in, you know, that is able to preside in whatever it is that you are resolving, um, you could absolutely find some help, right? Um, and be able to reach a sort of sense of security and um, just stability in your life related to any sort of things that have been happening related to finances, related to the law, legal institutions, um, any issues with power and authority figures, any issues with higher education or even travel, relocation, and settling, right? Feeling stable and settling um, and just resolving certain matters, right? Okay, so take a moment to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and let's get into your more personalized horoscopes and channeled spiritual insights with the tarot based on your zodiac sign concerning how these eclipses may be impacting your personal experiences. By sparking certain karmic closures, completions, and resolves in your life, and sparking blessed new beginnings. So, for your personalized astrology and tarot readings, I definitely use these Moon Child and Moonology focused tarot decks in particular for your UA Light Celestial Insights. So, check out the timestamp for your rising sign in particular, but also your sun and your moon sign in any sign in which you have a stellium, right? Those can indicate, um, give some insight on the particular areas of your life where you may be experiencing these things and where the spiritual guidance could apply. Hello, dear Aries. So the sort of cosmic spotlight it's really on you this year, right? And related to so many different planetary transits, right? In terms of Jupiter, in terms of the North Node moving into your sign, in terms of these eclipses being all up in your shit too, to be quite honest, right? And it's truly about this overhaul for you, this complete sort of overhaul and new beginning. This is really a time where it's like the universe is asking you to truly tie up all loose ends and truly purge all of these aspects of your former life that have kept you from being in alignment with the divine, with your embodiment of your highest self, your best self, and your ability to live a life that really reflects how incredibly creative, expansive, spiritual, uh, talented, and intelligent that you are, right? And, and you essentially being able to, um, rack up a lot of wealth, right? <laughs> With all that you have going on, you quite literally being the essence of creation, right? And that is really um, sort of reflected by the fact that these, you know, Taurus and Scorpio um, eclipses have really been about trying to um, get you to heal and purge all of these areas of your life internally and externally, right? And truly, truly heal yourself, know yourself deeply and come to this space of personal power and authority where that um, you wield that in the world truly as the magician. And the particular full moon eclipses for 2023, um, the final full moons uh, on the Taurus and Scorpio axis are putting the spotlight on your second and your eighth houses. The second house is the house of your sense of personal values, self-worth, and how that is reflected in your net worth and finances. And um, it's a kind of put your money where your mouth is, eclipse um, sort of... Um, location, right? Where the cosmos sort of asks this question of how does your spending in your lifestyle lifestyle reflect your values and your investment in long-term stability or goals? And if not, 
then the cosmos are like trying to force you to align your sense of self-worth and your finances um, to create that sort of aligned life, right? Where you're able to achieve long-term stability and goals and financial freedom. And this portal is one where essentially you will be confronted with money-making opportunities to grow your money and shape your sense of personal and, and shape your sense of personal values, self-worth and net worth. And where you're essentially going to be forced to truly invest your time, attention and money wisely and responsibly in the interest of your long-term goals. Um, through budgeting, wealth management, taking risks, seeking the right um, collaborators and advisors, and spending responsibly and essentially coming to terms with your earning potential and trajectory, right? And how that potential and trajectory trajectory is truly infinite so long as you are confident and you believe in yourself and that and so long as you are empowered in negotiating contracts related to pay partnerships and assets right and um just having um strong financial literacy and the eighth house is that house of money losses and gains and um also financial literacy right and about um, negotiating contracts and um, resolving and bringing to a close any issues that may be dealing with money, partnerships, mutual assets, and also any legal cases, right? The um, full moon eclipse in Scorpio and Taurus are really going to be about asking you to, and also supporting you, right, in resolving and bringing to a close any legal and financial and toxic relationship and relationship dynamic issues, right? Whether that is um, with family, social groups, workplaces, or any areas in your life where you may have experienced discrimination um, or unfairness, um, or I don't know, any sort of like attacks, any vulnerability, um, and even uh, anything related to your sense of identity, whether that is um, uh, changes that you have made legally related to your identity, your name, whether that is through marriage or through personal transformation, anything related to transformation of your uh, physical appearance and how that may be entailed with um, any issues with health insurance or insurance in general. And um, I don't know, any sort of like medical bureaucratic types of things, right? Um, and this could also be a cycle of um, beginning to clear debt, right? And um, experience financial freedom right given everything that we mentioned about these eclipses in the larger overview and in general right because you are the first sign in the zodiac and um this all of these readings are related to your natural houses right everything that was mentioned in the sort of general uh collective astrology breakdown absolutely applies to you specifically and personally right and where you know your blessings and your new beginnings are related to your personal identity given that spotlight on your first house and your seventh house right in terms of relationships and if you look at the cards here right um um, and, and the seventh house in terms of relationships, that's about partnerships, but it's also about your relationship with the law um, or with any legal cases, right? And then <clears throat> the cards just absolutely reflect the astrology as well, right? In terms of this question of what is resolving or reaching closure for you, we quite literally have the contracts card here in reverse at the top of the spread. And then this middle row of cards here, these are the cards that came out related to this question of what sort of blessed new beginnings are um, sort of being sparked in your life, right? Related to these eclipses. And we have the Knight of Swords. We have the Shadow Work card here. And then we have the Ten of Cups, right? And, you know, 
the cards reflect the astrology just in such a succinct way where if you look closely the art in this knight of swords card here is even a pretty direct depiction of what a new moon eclipse looks like in terms of the position of the moon and the earth like blocking out the sun and uh there's sort of being a a sort of um the light that is being filtered through shining a spotlight on the knight of swords in this picture so it's like it's a depiction of what the per the personal focus of a total new moon solar eclipse in your sign quite literally looks like right it's like the light of the moon being blocked but the light that is coming through being a spotlight on you right so you are this knight of swords in this card here and um there's there are so many messages that are coming through in this right and it's about um you know starting with what is coming to a close right the contracts in reverse absolutely mapping on to the astrology suggesting that any legal contractual and relationship matters will be a focus for a resolve and closure for you specifically in terms of you essentially embodying this knight of swords energy right and you know truly using facts wisdom to your advantage um in anything where you might need evidence right or where you're dealing with documentations and any sort of bureaucratic or legal things and then also like having honest self-expression right um being decisive and advocating for what it is that you desire and deserve right and what is in your best interest and this is and that and that being a sort of direct reflection or result of this long shadow work um sort of I don't even know what to call it. It's not even a period. It's been like, it's been such a long, long shadow work journey for you, years worth, right? Of you continuing to like own and come home and to yourself and embody a new and improved and healed and empowered sense of self, right? Um, you know, just one that you have been coming home to for a very long time in terms of doing years of shadow work, really having these life experiences challenges crises um you know like spiritual transformations mystical experiences all kinds of things right that have been helping you to dislodge and do away with trauma um see the truth and cut ties in relationships that deter you from your truth and you know any sort of scenarios, circumstances, and relationships that want you to disown your truth and, and your deep intellectual and creative talents, right? And, you know, it's like, if you look at it, you look at the depiction here, it's like the shadow work, the, the, the moon goddess, the divine, right? And, and this, this sense of, this pure sense of self and this aspect of truth, all of these aspects of you, right? Um, that you have integrated it's like she's it's quite literally being uh transferred right you know the palm is open and it's it's like being filtered through and expressed through who you are now as this knight of swords this is about this process of integration and just honesty and authenticity for you now and and you expressing yourself and being empowered using your voice in all of these different ways um in your self-advocacy but also in terms of like what it is that you even do for a living and for many aries a lot of this being about your self-expression and your creative expression and even um you using your sort of uh spiritual gifts um and your deep wisdoms from studying, you know, the occult, astrology, uh, esoteric topics, psychology, all of these kinds of things, right? Or higher education, right? In some way, something, whatever your trade is, right? It's like you, um, just having such a deep wisdom from 
from the challenges, from any hardships, but also from your bravery and you going after what it is that you want now and you just being really um, authentic and brave in who you are and what it is that you deserve, right? This is just a wholesale overhaul, a new blessed beginning happening for you in every area of your life to truly support your liberation, right? And so this is also, you know, about if you are still in this process, right? It's like um, this, the cosmos have kind of been orchestrating this for so, so, so long. So like the eclipses happening at the critical zero and the last 29 degrees, like, listen, if you ain't learned it by now, like the spirit, like spirit and the cosmos are about to like <laughs> shake your ass up. <laughs> like they about to shake you awake and shake your life up in these ways where like it is unavoidable for you to sort of uh face yourself, embody your truth, and to truly align with your purpose, um, and to sort of ascend to a new life. Like in every way. I mean like in every way too. <laughs> Because this is so much about relationships, what you value and your valuables. Like that is every, that's everything. All of the things that sort of secure and structure your life. That's relationships. That's your money and your material and financial stability and security and, cre and career. Like that is it, you know? So, um, it is really about, um, also, you know, like I said, if you haven't done it, the eclipses are going to force you to clear out everything mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually that really hinders and blocks your intuitive and creative flow, your expression of truth, and also your ability to shine and be the sun, right? If you look at this Knight of Swords card, it's like the light the light has been blocked but it's like it's also about this sort of purging this light is about filtering all of the darkness out right so that um there is a sort of renewal and restoration to this sort of pure sense of self and that is also what shadow work is about and um you know having the full moon and cancer card here this card at the bottom this is a personal issue reaches resolution this is all um um, suggesting, you know, a sort of positive omen in terms of any of these issues that you might be dealing with in those areas that I mentioned. And then um, this is also about, um, because the eclipse and even the card sort of reflecting the eclipse in the sense of like the moon blocking out the sun. Um, and, you know, you being in a sort of spotlight. This is also about, you know, taking measures to protect yourself and all that you have built and are building for yourself um, on the financial material side, but also in terms of like you protecting your innermost self and your emotions and your peace and your sacred private life, right? And your happiness in addition to your assets, right? And so this is absolutely about a new relationship to privacy and disclosure in addition to creative and aesthetic self-expression and accessibility, right? personally and professionally. Um, and so this is, this is where, you know, um, that sort of forewarning that I mentioned before about, you know, Pluto being an Aquarius, perhaps having a direct effect on you. Um, and there being a need to like, uh, take precautions in terms of like what and how, what you reveal about yourself, the protection of like, all of your things online uh, or important personally identifying documents, but also like um, I lost, I lost the thought. I lost the thought. I lost it. I lost it. Hmm. Hmm. That's something that's okay. I'm sitting with this as a as a message here. There's something up there's a feeling of loss here. You feel like you've lost something.
this is about you all continuing to process grief related to everything that you are having to step away from in order to step truly into your truth. This could even be, you know, grieving parts of you that you feel like you've lost, that you're trying to reintegrate in this really new way. This could even be about this feeling of feeling like you lost your other half with someone you love. People that you love. That you can't get back. Like some things that just can't be restored, you know. Um... And it, and again, right? This is this is gonna be that sort of tug of war for you, and I think maybe just the last bits of shadow work that you're gonna have to do, um, because when you, uh, I, getting back to the cards, right? It's like this ten of cups, you know? It's like with this ten of cups, it's like the moon goddess and the knight of swords. They are sort of turning away from the Ten of Cups, right? So this is old relationships. All of your most important relationships in your past. They're being, and that's where I was getting this message, right? Where it's like, there's a relinquishing of all of these old relationships that were the source of your life. The very foundations of everything that you knew, how you related and felt a sense of connection in the world while also it being important to do the the shadow work and the work of grieving so that you can also be open to all of the new connections and relationships that can actually help you reach this new and better Ten of Cups, right? That you've never actually experienced, that you've never even seen. Like love, love, connection, and respect, and reciprocity, and being, and being like fully, fully seen for the truth of who you are. like in a way that you never, never experienced before and that you've always wanted and that you deserve, right? And so that is also what this moon is talking about in this Ten of Cups. It's about that disconnection from all of those in the past who actually never saw you, who never saw you and who purposely tried to dim your light and who, who didn't, who didn't want to like give you the proper respect, appraisal, recognition? Appreciation, everything that you deserve, that you wanted, that you deserved. Right? And and again, right, the the opposite of that, the true Ten of Cups being something that you have never experienced and that you will start to experience and that is being sparked as the new beginning through these new moon eclipses, right? But that requires you being healed enough to be open to them. And aligned, truly, in terms of your self-concept so that you can attract these relationships that truly, truly see you and respect you in the ways that you deserve to. You got to embody it. You got to demand it. That's what this Knight of Swords is about, okay? So, yeah. So, to wrap up your reading here, the full moon in Cancer is the card that came out. Um, related to just the sort of overarching oracle um, message in terms of the outcomes of what the um, 
eclipse season of 2023 is orchestrating for you, and it is personal issues reaching a resolution. Okay, and it, it that truly, truly sums up everything. But I'm also getting this specifically related to, um, yes, emotional and financial security, those sort of personal issues reaching resolution. Um, and, you know, cancer is related to the sign of fam. It's related to family and home. And so I'm also seeing this as talking about issues and changes in your home stability, maybe moving, relocating, settling down after a lot of movement or a period of a lot of travel and feeling more at home in the world and being back in this period of of making new connections after perhaps a period of isolation and deep healing. That's for some of you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right. And so we're going to wrap this up with your angel number message. Okay. So that is a part of the UA Light Celestial Insight is about all of the ways that spirit speaks to you uh, through me, through the cards and the stars and also angel numbers. And so the channeled angel number for you is 1133. Such a powerful, powerful uh, master number that is absolutely about having this really powerful, powerful connection and even favor amongst the stars and the etheric beings. And, you know, number one is about intuition new beginnings, creation, independence, and uniqueness. And then with the number 11 about this being a sort of portal that is activating all of these things for you. Spiritual awakening, enlightenment, self-expression, sensitivity. Yeah, healing your heart. I'm getting that. Healing your heart, your relationship to the divine feminine. Connecting with your higher self. And then number three is a master number as well. That is about your connection to the master numbers and master teachers and maybe you even being that in some way. And so this number in general, in general, wow, in general <laughs> is a message that, you know, the ascended masters are helping you to focus on manifesting your desires. They're helping you to find peace, clarity, and love within. And it says, number 33 is the master number that resonates with compassion, blessings, inspiration, honesty, discipline, bravery, and courage, and that all things are possible when you're being divinely guided. Wow. Angel number 1133 is a powerful message to give your fears, doubts, and worries to the angels and the ascended masters so that they can be transmuted and healed on your behalf. You have much spiritual work to do within yourself so that you are fully prepared in every way to fulfill your soul mission and divine destiny. Trust that the angels support you completely and surround you with love and protection at all times. The angels and universal energies are working things out for your highest good and helping with your preparations and long-term work. So angel number 1133 gives you the courage to fully express yourself and live your life with enthusiasm and optimism, safe in the knowledge that you are well blessed, loved, and supported in all that you do. I'm getting the message that if there are any sort of legal or home issues, any worries about safety, those will be resolved. Okay, this says live your life with joy, passion, and purpose as this will manifest your true desires. Be prepared to expand and increase your spiritual development and awareness and use your knowledge and wisdom for the upliftment of others. 
The divine is sending you positive energies and signs. Pay attention to your thoughts, ideas, and insights as they give you information about the next steps to take along your spiritual path. And any positive changes or projects you are considering right now will be well worth your while and the angels will assist you in their undertaking. All right, dear Aries, I hope that this is extremely, extremely helpful. Definitely give this video a like and subscribe. Check out the rest of the readings related to your sun, moon, rising sign, or any signs where you have a stellium. I hope that you are bestowed all of the blessings that you have been seeking, all of the love and the support that you deserve. Take good care. Hello there, Taurus. So the general collective astrology themes and wisdom that came through in the um, first part of this video absolutely applies to you personally in a real way, given that um, the full moon eclipses are happening in your sign and then your sister sign. But in terms of how these may be affecting you personally, closures and resolves might be happening related to your first houses of identity and your seventh house of partnerships, relationships, right? The first house is related to your sense of self, how you see yourself and how you want to be seen. It's about your sense of identity, your body, your body image, how you dress and adorn yourself, but also your personal boundaries. And um, the seventh house is that house that is related to your personal romantic and um, professional relationships and partnerships, right? And all also these sort of relational dynamics in your life, right? The ways that you relate to the public. And blessed new beginnings are um, perhaps related to your 12th and your 6th houses, right? Your 12th house is that house that is all about your sort of interior world, your private life, your relationship to your deepest dreams and desires, but also your subconscious, right? Looking at trauma, looking at your uh, sort of deep beliefs and um, even your fears, right? Privacy, taking time to nurture and rest and care for yourself. And the sixth house has a sort of similar, a sort of similar um, sort of theme and lesson, right? It's all about this balance of time for yourself um, versus the time that you expend energy on others, right? And it's about give and take and just in general, a balance between work and life. And this is absolutely reflected in the cards here. The cards are definitely sort of emphasizing this balance between taking time out from ambitions and from people and public appearances and performance, right? After a time of intense growth, identity transformation and experimentation with your self-presentation, um, with fashion, um, or even with your professional branding, while also not limiting yourself, right? Um, and that is emphasized by the first two cards that we pulled out here. We have the world in reverse and then the third chakra, which is about life force energy and identity, right? Absolutely um, related to this uh, Aries new moon total solar eclipse, you know, highlighting your 12th house. And so that world being in reverse is absolutely about turning inward, right? Turning inward, replenishing your um, your life force energy, right? Grounding, connecting with nature, your inner truth and spirituality and stillness, right? Stillness for greater self and material security, right? Given that you have been ambitious, you do have your sights set on reaching, um, 
more like ambitious goals, right? Um, and, you know, sort of getting clear on a strategy for reaching certain ambitions, right, that you have for yourself. Um, but the thing is, is that taking time out for that renewal and that replenishment and actually enjoying the fruits of your labor, that allows you to connect deeply with your truth and any strategic clarity that you need for achieving any ambitious goals, right? And it sends a sort of uh, message to the universe, you know, of gratitude for all that you have and all that you are so that the divine can continue to bless you, right? Um, and this is also a sort of message that um, has been coming through in your other readings as well, right? In terms of you also, after having this sort of um, intense period of like connection and networking and um, professional achievement, financial growth, all of these things, um, you know, where you have been truly um, widening your reach, your connections, and securing public success in whatever industry you're in, you know, through publishing online channels and partnerships. Um, it's about you coming to this space now where, you know, you need to be mindful in your associations and relationships, right, in all areas of your life. That is also that sort of polarity of, you know, the 12th and the 6th house being highlighted. The 12th and the 6th house polarity is about greater discretion and uh, discrimination and discernment in your relationships in terms of who may be secret enemies, um, who it is safe to disclose your most important dreams and ambitions to, and who um, could be, you know, secret enemies um, within your workplace, right? Um, because the sixth house is also about uh, workplace and collegiate uh, dynamics and relationships, right? And so there is absolutely something about that here for you, while also in general, um, this sort of message for you to have greater discernment and discrimination in, in, in disclosure in general, right? Professionally, um, related to like just your professional image and, um, what it is that you share of yourself in general, right? And um, there was a message related to this in your April and your March horoscopes too about like just not feeling the need to take up every opportunity and to use your discernment to just have more discretion and only act on the aligned opportunities with your values and that are aligned with divine timing for certain things, right? And so um, not saying yes to everything, saying no to some things and truly, truly taking this time to sort of like pull back, pull back your energy, move from a space of authenticity um, so that you keep um, attracting abundance in the right kinds of connections. and. Um, you know, move from a place of self-love, you know, rest and healing, don't burn yourself out. Um, and just really take a moment for deeper self-discovery, self-study and mastery, you know, and focus on any projects in music, psychology, you know, healing arts, astrology, public communications. This is also a sort of um, message here that any sort of projects that you will be working on uh, wrapping up and eventually launching that you will see success from a lot of these things, right? And so don't act from a space of desperation or even impatience or greed, right? There is no absence of opportunity um, and no sort of indication that you 
will not be able to reach, you know, certain goals and ambitions, right? You absolutely will. You have Jupiter that is going to be coming through your sign, right? Um, next month or in a matter of, of, of weeks and days, right? And so this is going to be an absolute lucky time for you, positive time for you in relationship to launches and expansion um, and, and even uh, opportunities for more travel right and so take this time to rest up and renew so that you have the bandwidth the capacity you know to maximize and take advantage of this sort of like blessed year-long portal of Jupiter moving through your sign and beyond okay I hope that this was helpful definitely take a minute to like this video and subscribe to the channel and make sure that you check out all of the other readings on this channel right um, there's been so many good nuggets of wisdom and definitely um, make sure that you take a look at the rest of the readings for your sun and your moon sign and any signs where you might have a stellium take good care Taurus Hello, dear Geminis. So the sort of overall theme and message for your reading is that it's really about your power and public opinion and about these eclipses truly triggering the sort of deepest healing for you to take your power back forever, right? And um, I want to note that there's a message here about the smoke clears. Um, I'm getting that as a message for you and something about clearing the air and also keeping your energy output clear despite, you know, people wanting smoke with you, right? <laughs> I got that as a message because, um, I needed to sage and really shift the energy for your reading. And I was receiving this message from the smoke quite literally and um it absolutely relates to a lot of these sort of wisdom and channeled messages um from the cosmos and from the divine that has been coming through in your readings um you know absolutely in relationship to this Taurus and Scorpio eclipse portal that has been happening you know, since 2022, right? They're just being this, you know, you essentially for everyone because this uh, Taurus and Scorpio uh, sort of portal and polarity has been happening for so long. Um, it's been a sort of three-part series. The sort of issues that people have been dealing with have been sort of like ongoing. And so there have been cyclical and long-standing themes coming through in the messages. And so I do want to say, definitely take a look at your March 2023 um, tarot reading here on this channel, right? Your March horoscopes. Um, and just click to the timestamp for the tarot reading because so much of the stuff that came through in that reading is relevant here and I don't want to repeat myself because my readings are very very comprehensive in terms of the astrology and the tarot and because I read from a sort of integral Vedic and Western astrology perspective the readings actually touch on a lot of things that will have sort of uh, resonance for a sort of long duration of time as well. Okay, so definitely take a look at the March Tarot reading here for you on this channel. But I want to say here that in terms of the astrology, right, with those uh, Taurus and Scorpio full moons, it is um, shedding a spotlight on your 12th and your 6th houses. And... Um, these areas definitely spotlight, you know, issues of distrust, discernment, and discrimination in your professional relationships, right? Your relationships with colleagues, collaborators, any advisors, mentors, your relationship with your higher self, with your spirit guides, with your faith, right? Um, and 
anybody who you trust for advice um, or wisdom. And it's also about, you know, tests of faith, trust, and spiritual fitness while you're on this sort of journey of achieving your dreams, right? And also having work-life balance amidst all of this and and sanity, right? Mental health (laughs) and psychological health, right? Um, Through a deep sense of spirituality and clear intuitive discernment. And This is also about how your work helps to heal others, helps to heal the collective while it also helps to heal you and about your role and even your identity as a healer. That is something that is coming through, has been coming through very clearly for the Gemini Collective. And um, the new moon eclipses for 2023, the Aries and the Libra ones, are spotlighting your 11th house and your fifth houses, right? And while we've also had Jupiter going through, you know, your 11th house, and right? And so this is all about um, media, creative art, and massive blessings, right? And growth. This could absolutely mean, you know, viral moments, viral sales, expanded market and social media reach, helpers um, from people who are foreigners or at a distance. This could be about touring. This could be about um, a big contract, investor or partnership, a big payout, or even scholarships um, for school, or even these opportunities to study and learn or travel abroad, right? And it's also about these new moon eclipses bringing you great news and results, right? Despite any of the longstanding issues that you may have had navigating, you know, distrust or discernment um, and any sort of tensions in your professional relationships, right? And any professional dealings or, you know, navigating, you know, feedback, criticism, and all sorts of things related to your creativity, your professional creative projects, anything, right? And from the cards here, I'm getting, you know, a sort of reoccurring message similar to that uh, March tarot message here about self-image, branding, and marketing. The fifth house can also be about um, your relationship to your body, your sexuality, sensuality, and creative and even sensual and artistic expression. Um, and so with that 11th and fifth house, you know, sort of spotlight with the eclipses and even with the 12th and the sixth house theme, I'm getting a message here again about you know self image branding and marketing and maybe a refusal or an inability to look at feedback that offers critique being able to look at that from an unemotional lens in order to make any necessary personal and professional improvements right because of how painful and even overwhelmingly unfair or hateful Um, Some people's like selective outrage, criticisms and treatments towards you have been in the past. Okay. And you even having had experiences in the past, you know, where people try to couch and, and really like launch their hate and their vengeance and their jealousy and even their sabotage. Um, of, you know, how talented you are under this sort of guise of caring about you, right? And it's very tricky. It's very tricky and it's complicated. It involves gaslighting. Um, and in, you know, again, these tests of trust and high key discernment, right? And a really, uh, sort of, healthy mental state, right? Good mental health. Um, Because the key to navigating that sort of dynamic is deep healing and shadow work and 
<clears throat> precise discernment and quite literally right like my voice is going out and like the fifth chakra the throat chakra card here for you um is in reverse right and so there there's absolutely a very um clear message here about about that about uh you know the messages and being able to discern <laughs> things very clearly um because if the wound right of the hateful and hurtful experiences are healed then you're able to actually you know intelligently and rationally like filter the feedback you know for the divine wisdom that it offers you and that you can use to grow and excel right and if you look at you know this fifth chakra throat chakra card here being in reverse right it's like it, it's all it's almost like it's lit up in a way that is also highlighting this message of being able to filter and discern the communication and the messages around you or that are being launched toward you right um and it's like and and then the sun right this is all about your relationship to your self confidence you know and you know clarity on who you are um being able to there's a book here right there are all these things right it's like an ability to 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 stand firm and confident in who you are and also to be able to to gain knowledge right from your surroundings right in a way that's kind of what i'm getting from this sun card here and um and it's like if the discernment and the tactics of like spiritual protection are mastered, you're also able to repel and transmute bad energy, right? You're able to see people clearly for who they are, you know, the devils, the demons, all of it, and disengage or, you know, play chess and transmute the energy, right, to your best interest. It's just also what this sun card is kind of kind of illuminating to me and also the six of wands and the shadow work cards here. And um, because this six of wands card here is, is also a sort of like, it's like a minor arcana, version of the lovers which is your card you know related to your sign of gemini and it's all about integration you know from shadow work right and so it's like if you know if that sort of wound from those past experiences is still unhealed right and if you have not done shadow work to truly acknowledge you know your painful experiences and you know accept your painful experiences of mistreatment or or acknowledge and accept your shortcomings and, and your edges of growth and you know then be able to forgive and love yourself and integrate the higher knowledge to come to a space of strength then what happens is you might simply put on armor of appearing unbothered right without having actually truly healed and people being able to still read that as an authentic performance right and another thing that could happen is that you may you know in your efforts to you know rightfully seek out you know only the spaces of love and support you might actually swing the pendulum like too far to one end and become like a people pleaser right to get the love and support that you seek or you might only seek out and listen to the feedback that appeases you or that coddles you right and blows smoke up your ass right it just that will simply just grow your ego and also a false notion that any feedback you know was always black and white and that you were in are only ever in the right right and it's like <laughs> that is all still from a space of fragility and insecurity versus integration and that will also hinder your growth and then it also will set you up for another extreme round of you know 
sabotage and betrayal from the wolves in sheep's clothing, right? If you are only surrounding yourself by people who just tell you what you want to hear, these are that gives people the power to manipulate you by telling you only what you want to hear. And then you end up falling harder and on your own sword in another ego death, right? From refusing to really listen to divine wisdom for your growth and success, right? Because you're not able to, um, because you don't have the sort of like capacity, right, to to listen to it, to filter it, um, and, you know, use the divine wisdom for your growth and success because of somebody's delivery and even their hateful, you know, intentions. And it's like, the thing is, is right, you have license to listen to only what you want to want to listen to. All right. <laughs> you have the license to protect your energy, to build a sacred cocoon of support around yourself, you know, but truly interrogate if it is from a space of strength, higher understanding, self-worth and discernment, and whether you are actually cloaking yourself in a spiritual shield that lets the right stuff in, but keeps the right stuff out, <laughs> you know, versus simply, you know, cloaking yourself in an armor built out of fear and insecurity and fragility, you know, from being unhealed, you know, an armor that continues to weigh you down, keep you stuck. And that doesn't allow you to grow, right? And fly, right? And, you know, I'm getting that for some of you, you're being asked to complete the healing of this kind of wound, right? Related to these scenarios, you know, you, you're really asked to touch the places of pain and trauma that are still tender so that you're able to really strengthen your self-love, your self-respect, your self-worth, and your security in yourself, right? So you are a confident leader. And, you know, someone who claims and speaks up for what you deserve and, you know, to then build healthier, honest and fair relationships, right, of humility and mutual respect, right? And, um, you know, having this capacity to take in critiques and filter feedback that will actually help you in your success, you know, and it's like, it's a tricky thing. Um, because. I, you all have been experiencing the gamut of all of those things where it's been, it's been negative. It's been hateful. It's been all of these things. It's been sabotage. It's been jealousy. And, um, where you all have been fragile, you've been hurt and it's created these wounds and where people have intentionally tried to play on your wounds, um, being able to see how fragile, insecure you are, but also how talented, powerful, <laughs> and how much potential you have as well, right? Just all of the things, because that is your duality, right? That is your duality. You integrate that. You are a force. And that is also something that people fear, right? But the thing is, it's like, whether someone is giving you hateful criticism or helpful critique, it's to your advantage, especially being a Gemini, because it's like with hateful critique, either way, a lot of the times for Geminis, hateful critique is because people are unable to do what you do at your worst or your best. <laughs> like <laughs> that, that's the true tea. Okay. All shade, all tea. That is it. It's like, when people critique Geminis, and I'm going to say this about Aries too, right? It's like when people critique Geminis and Aries, it's like because y'all are the two signs who are like really, really connected to source and like really unique, innovative, creative things, right? Um, and it's like when people hate on y'all is because they hate on y'all power, Um and your potential, right? And it's like, either way, they are unable to do what you do at your worst or your best. So truly, as long as you're humble and are open to learn and are like just spiritually and psychologically strong, you can learn from 
anyone and anything and level up for you. Because you got the ability to outdo them and yourself. <laughs> like to be, to be quite honest, right? And so that is truly the message um, that I am getting for you all to do this healing, liberate yourself, shine, be wonderful, be beautiful, take advantage of um, all of these amazing transits that are happening in your favor, right? Um, and truly the divine sending you everything as information, right? That's always the test for Gemini's is that you are the mutable air signs um, that are connected to divine wisdom, right? And alchemy and innovation, right? Uniqueness and um, new and fresh and original ideas. And so it's like you can, it's like everything is information for you. If you take the ego out of it, everything is information that you can use. And so the divine just wants you to heal this wound. Take, take, because there's, there's, there is some truth to some of these things, right? It's like, you're not perfect. You, you there is always room for you to grow. And in the ways that you're right, you're really right. And in the ways that you can grow, it's like, it's fine. There's no ego about that. Right. Um, yes, there are some people who want you to feel bad about yourself, right? And who don't want you to be confident, <laughs> right? And outdo them and and be the force that you're able to be. But that's fine too. That's fine too. It comes with the territory. It comes with the territory. It comes with the territory. How are you going to use it? Right, that that twelfth house is also about alchemy and spiritual wisdom. Right, it's it's about energy work. So the wrap up message is, you know, for you to make all of the energy work for you. Right, okay. And so we're gonna wrap up with your angel number message that came through for you. And the angel number message that came through for you is twelve fifty five. And this. Angel number message says, have faith and trust that the life changes you are experiencing are important and necessary in regards to your life purpose and soul mission. 1255 is made up of the numbers 1, 2, and the master number 55. So it's about motivation, positivity, and ambition, progress, inspiration, fulfillment, and happiness, new beginnings, and how your thoughts and beliefs create your reality. It also resonates with compromise, balance, flexibility, adaptability, your duality, support, even non-support, and encouragement and kindness. Right? It relates to serving your life purpose, relates to your faith and trust, and vibrations of personal freedom and individuality. Yes, look at that sun card. Look at that sun card. It's also about curiosity, adventure, adaptability, and life lessons learned through experience and resourcefulness. What did I say? You know, code, I don't read these until at the end of your message. All right. Um, I get the message at the top when I'm pulling the cards. I set it aside. And then see with you all as I'm reading it, the ways that it aligns with the stars and the cards. Okay. So this says the choices that you have made and the actions you have taken have paved the way for new opportunities and adventures to manifest in your life. Trust that your angels encourage, guide, and fully support you as you serve your divine life purpose. It is time to let go of the old that is no longer positively serving you and get ready for wonderful changes to take place in your life. Release old doubts, fears, and perceived obstacles and look forward to wonderful new opportunities. Yes, 
Yes. Look at these cards. Yes. And it says, trust that the life changes are for your highest good and will prove to be most beneficial. Maintain a positive attitude and outlook and expect exciting new interests and experiences to enter your life. All right, dear Geminis, give this video a like, subscribe, share this insight with others, and definitely take a look at all of the other videos here on the channel, especially that March horoscope tarot reading. And um, look at the videos aligned with your moon, your sun, and your rising, and any signs or you might have stelliums. All right. I hope that this helps. Take good care. Hello, dear Cancers. So I have to say that um, your reading in particular really sticks out related to um, the cards and the stars having such um, very clear synchronicity in terms of the messages about what might be coming to a close and resolve um, and what sort of issues and events might be appearing for you um, related to the eclipse astrology and uh, bless new beginnings. And also there being this really clear like color story in the cards that are also reflecting, um, reflecting the story. So in terms of closures and resolves, the Taurus and Scorpio full moon eclipses are going to be spotlighting your 11th and your 5th houses, right? And these are the houses that have to do with your ambitions, your dreams, travel, um, blessings, right? And taking advantage of opportunities and also working collaboratively with people on creative projects, right? Um, and so it's very much a spotlight on um, ambitions and it being a sort of lucky time to um, continue taking chances, right? But it also is about goodness, discernment and trust, right, in yourself, in your creativity, and um, the people who you work with, right? And this top row of cards is such a striking color story, but even in terms of like what it is revealing, right, um, about the sort of issues that may be coming to closure and resolve for you. And it's related to anxiety. It's related to deceit or distrust. And it's also related to... Um, love relationships, right? So relationships um, with family, with creative or love partners, um, and also with your own deep desires, right? Um, and you feeling confident and essentially um, going forward to follow your dreams, right? And achieve your ambitions taking advantage of opportunities, right? And so the bottom row of cards, uh, the first two cards were pulled in relationship to this question of what blessed new beginnings uh, could be sparked for you in relationship to these eclipses, particularly the Aries and the Libra new moons, right? And these are going to be spotlighting your 10th house of career and professional uh, reputation, professional achievement, career advancement, and then the fourth house, which is also about your sort of foundational relationships, you know, in your family or in business, right? And also issues related to family, children, pets, and parenthood. And so um, I got a few different messages and downloads um, related to the messages in these cards, right? And how they relate to the astrology as well. There's something here about... Um, you know, you being passionate about creating or achieving something and it perhaps requiring you opening your heart to someone new, right? Maybe a woman um, or it requiring you to even cut someone out of an opportunity that you want to take and it causing you to evaluate, you know, um, 
your trust or control issues and insecurities in relationships, or how you perhaps let relationships and loyalties or obligations to others come before your own independent ambitions, right? And having to sort of like resolve those feelings, maybe feeling anxious about it, right? Um, and so there are these questions, right, of like, in terms of like uh, being fearful of opening your heart to trust someone new related to an opportunity, it's like, what past experiences might be influencing your feelings? What is giving you suspicion and distrust? And why do you feel guilty for choosing yourself and your happiness, right? Are you afraid of confrontation even, right? If there are some issues of distrust um, in any of your professional relationships or even in your personal, familial, or even romantic relationships as well, right? For some of you, this is actually about your children or even uh, pregnancy. Some of you may have a child or a loved one who you suspect is hiding something big from you, maybe a pregnancy from you um, or hiding it from their partner even or something like that. Or for some of you, you're pregnant or want to get pregnant or or for some of you, you want permanent contraception so you don't get pregnant again and are unsure of how to reveal this information or navigate the topic, right? Having these kinds of conversations, right? And, you know, with pregnancy, regardless of which of these scenarios fit, it's like there's, of course, a time limit on how long you can, uh, you know, hold off on having these certain conversations or how long you can even disguise, you know, pregnancies, right? And so, um, for others of you, this is also, this is about suspicions of infidelity in your love relationship or, or are you feeling unable to express hidden desires, right? Or feeling unable to just be honest with yourself about certain desires in your life of any kind, right? And that could be, you know, unhappiness issues in a relationship or with yourself, right? Maybe wanting to improve your uh, sex life or explore your sexuality and, and the truth that you desire, you know, um, a different kind of relationship or you desire to explore same sex relationships or any other things that are considered sexually taboo, right? Or that you want to change your body image, right? And um, maybe this is even about, you know, you being su suspected um, as being pregnant or you being harassed for your body image and measures that you take or have taken to achieve some sort of like physical transformation or just some sort of change in your body or your appearance, right? And it's like, maybe you feel insecure about your body image. And um, there is also like uh, the attention that you're getting related to your body image might also be continuing to contribute to that, right? And it's like this sort of cycle. And um, it could also be, you know, something about feeling insecure about your body image and wondering if that is contributing to your partner having a wandering eye. Um, for some of you, right, I was just getting a lot of different messages, right? And it's the um, sort of waxing moon and third quarter moon um, messages here are, you know, definitely about having courage to move forward, to face things, and um, to continue to um, I think like continue to listen to your own intuition and confront your own sort of emotional or psychological or, or spiritual sort of insights and feelings about anything that you're navigating, right? Um, any nagging distrust, any sort of nagging suspicions or even feelings of like emotional overwhelm, like anything, right? And with the, um, if you look at the, the anxiety and deceit in the door to romance cards, um, 
and then the man holding a heart. It's like there's just in general this sort of striking color story that really relates to the astrology in terms of the astrology really spotlighting these um, <clears throat> particular issues that you may be feeling in these areas and, and that corresponding also to, you know, the root chakra, right, which is corresponded to the color red. It's like these feelings of um, uncertainty. The root chakra is all about our relationship to our foundational relationships um, and also our material and financial security. It's about the relationships and also just the material and financial stability and security that shapes and constructs our life. And, you know, so the cards are certainly illustrating that, um, you know, there is some trust, some uncertainty, and even some anxiety related to any um, decisions that you have to make that could potentially uh, destabilize any of the the those areas of your life um and you know it being really important for you to um just be brave right to follow your dreams and achieve your ambitions because it is also quite a lucky time to do so right um because of the 11th and the 5th houses, right, being ruled or, or there being eclipses in these houses and as they're related to blessings, ambitions, and, um, yeah, there being just a lot of positivity that could come from expanding your outlook, expanding your world view, expanding your market reach, um, and your networks, right? And and all of that also contributing to expanded net worth or finances and achievements and your career, right? So it all just kind of comes full circle and relates to each other. And then um, the fifth house is also connected to pets, I mentioned. And um, when you look at the cards, uh, the anxiety, the deceit, and the door to romance card is like there's a cage with a heart. Um, I'm also getting uh, the sort of like intuitive and psychic message that for some of you, um, these eclipses could also, and, you know, I hate to be a bearer of bad news if this has not transpired, but for some of you, this could also be about losing a pet, um, either um, a pet being lost through, you know, them passing on, needing to be put down, or, you know, them being missing, right? And maybe they're being an investigation to find a missing pet, right? And they're being, you know, some grieving that is being done about a pet or an emotional support animal, um, or even about uh, getting a new pet, right, in to offer some emotional support. This could even be about, like, for some of you who might have children, it's like a child, you know, having a child being really attached to a pet and losing a pet, even, um, even if it's not your, even if it's not, you know, your pet directly could even be, like, someone that you know and love dealing with this. Um, grieving a pet and an emotional support animal, um, and maybe you even witnessing this, um, or in general, this being a period where you are considering the addition of an emotional support animal to your family. Um, yeah, and you may be being worried about how that could uh, mesh with your home and work-life balance in some way. Yeah. So to wrap up your reading, I'm going to read for you, <clears throat> excuse me, read for you the um, sort of wisdom related to the waxing moon card. <clears throat> and so this says, have faith in your dreams. Have faith in your dreams. This could also... Yeah, this could absolutely be about you all receiving answers to something that you're worried about or suspicious about through your intuition or your dreams. 
I'm getting that. Um, but it says, don't give up. Any situation that you're asking about is still taking shape. You're nowhere near the end of the story. Whatever that is happening is a step along the way. Everything will be okay in the end. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. Okay, keep working towards whatever it is that you want. Um, and if you can't take practical steps, spend time meditating to receive answers to the questions that you have, right? Allow your higher self to download information to you about your next best steps with anything that you face this year. Mm. And it says, just because you can't see your dreams, it doesn't mean they're not manifesting. It says, stay focused on moving forward. Dig a little deeper to find courage and uh, pursue your dreams and put your foot down as you chase your goals. Absolutely. And then with the adjustments are required card, it says, um, be honest about whether there are toxic emotions involved in um, any sort of situations where you need to release these emotions, right? It says, all is not lost. There are, however, changes or adjustments required before you will get to where you want to be. A change, of course, is forecast. Okay, and work to understand events so that you can act with wisdom and reevaluate situations, okay? Trust may be required to move forward in situations. Yes, absolutely. That maps on to, to everything that we've just mentioned. All right. It says, no matter when you draw this card, the teaching is to release and to trust. Absolutely. And then I'm going to wrap this up lastly with your angel number message that came through. Okay, so your angel number message for this 2023 eclipse season is angel number 222, which is the master builder number. All right. That is also connected to ancient wisdom, vision, and transformation, right? And having faith, trust, encouragement to attain your success <clears throat> and about being adaptable and diplomatic in cooperation. All right. And it says that this number has to do with balance and manifesting miracles in new auspicious and timely opportunities. Take a balanced, harmonious, and peaceful stance in all areas of your life. The message is to keep the faith and stand strong in your personal truths. And it also tells you that everything will turn out for the best in the long term. Do not put your energies into negativity. Be aware that all is being worked out by spirit for the highest good of all involved. This is also reminding you to keep up the good work you are doing as the evidence of your manifestations are coming to fruition. And angel number 222 is a message of faith and trust from your angels. Nothing happens by chance. Everything happens for a reason. Maintain a positive attitude and you will find that everything will have positive results and you will receive abundant blessings and divine bright timing. Wow, absolutely, Ashe. I hope that this has been helpful. The messages were very clear and corresponded, you know, via the cards and the stars and, uh, you know, the channeled wisdom from the numbers. So definitely take a moment to like and subscribe. Look at all of the other messages that may align with your sun and moon sign in addition to your rising and where you may have stelliums in certain signs in your chart. So I hope that this helps. Take good care. Hello, dear Leos. So Leos, the main theme for your reading is that this 2023 eclipse season is about you reclaiming the spotlight and offering your magical medicine to the world. The eclipses are going to be sparking closures and resolves related to your 10th houses of career, professional development, professional reputation, and professional um, 
achievement and also your fourth house that is all about your family and your home life um, and your closest familial and personal and even business uh, relationships, right? And um, even closures and resolve to your sort of deepest, deepest core wounds, right? Healing in the sense, right? And we definitely have that reflected here in this top row of cards that was pulled, right? In relationship to this question of what is coming to closure and resolve for you in relationship to these eclipses. And we have the door to personal healing and happiness and the angel of strength. And um, I'm going to get into that a bit more, um, but it's absolutely related to you having done a lot of deep healing and deep digging and um, sort of putting yourself back together again. And in terms of blessed new beginnings that this eclipse season is going to be sparking for you, it is related to your ninth house and your third house, which are these houses of essentially. Um, expanding your message and spreading your message and your creativity and having a lot of opportunities to travel, to connect with others and to communicate and to learn, right? And so in general, the overarching sort of message here, <laughs> we also have the new moon card, quite literally, that says a new start is coming. And this is the card, the moonology card that is pulled in relationship to this question of overall, okay, what are the planets sort of orchestrating for you through these eclipses? And it is quite literally a new start, right? And even with different decks, right? The color story um, and the cards and, you know, just the synchronicity between the messages as well, between the stars and the cards are just so spot on, right? And it's really overall about the fact that a period of modesty, of insecurity, of dimming your light or even being hidden from the spotlight and healing, you know, while in a process of creative development and preparation, you know, that that is all coming to a close for you. And where these new moon eclipses in particular in your third and your ninth houses are about spreading your message and creativity, finally, right? Um, after all of that, and offering your gifts and your creations and all that you've learned and all that you've been cooking in the cauldron <laughs> as medicine to the world. This is absolutely about a deep personal and professional and even financial sort of level up and rebirth for you after a lot of witch work, after a lot of shadow work, right? After a time of loss and lessons, after having put in so much sort of secret blood, sweat, and tears in processes of conception, growth, nurture, and transformation of yourself and others and of your ideas, right? Into these completed projects and products and multimedia art. And so this eclipse season is the sort of launch point portal for your new projects, new partnerships, and of your sort of untamed and unabashed best self, right? Turning this lion back upright, you know, you are the lion in the zodiac, right? You are fearless, you are confident, and you know, so absolutely about, you know, you revealing your untamed and unabashed best self and sort of achieving your most soul satisfying success after all of it, right? After all of the healing, trauma, bearing your soul, um, birthing children, caring for children and others, mentoring others, right? Um, this is about you bearing your soul um, and being exposed and exposing your rawest self, right? Your truth, your talent, 
the body, the beauty, right? The beastly, right? And, and seeing the medicine that it offers others, right? And also sort of seeing the magic of the law of attraction and abundance just really work before your very eyes, right? Based on you having done the work, right? Just having done the work. And so I'm also getting to, you know, that this is about, you know, resolving or healing wounds related to your relationship to your own parents, um, any core wounds related to your, um, your own sort of, uh, like lessons that you may have learned from your parents, um, patterns that you may have repeated from your parents, or just in general, any wounds related to your parents, or even healing wounds related to your own parenting um, and even mentoring to others. Um, I'm also seeing, hearing something here about um, healing a wound uh, related to your early childhood experiences. Um, there also being something about your relationship to higher education or your child's educational experience that also might come up this year related to these eclipses. Um, but also, um, these are some themes that came up as well in the March and April horoscopes. They touched on different things, but in, in a lot of, uh, in, in, in deeper ways. So I would also definitely encourage you to go back and watch the March and April um, horoscope readings for your sign Leos. Even if you just click the timestamp, go straight to the Leo video. Like you need to watch those because they were so expansive. And, um, in general, I tend to, um, read pretty further out. Um, I read in a way that is integral and that, um, truly, truly, uh, takes into account these sort of long-term effects, uh, of the outer planets in relationship to the, uh, inner planets affecting your most immediate circumstances and also looking from an integral perspective in terms of Vedic and Western tropical astrology. So, um, I think that those messages still re resonate, um, really, really strongly here. Um, Especially um, in terms of that stuff about relationships with parenting, mentoring, higher education, children, wounds, all of this kinds of stuff. Um, but definitely with the with the spotlight on the ninth in the third house, there is absolutely um, about new beginnings and new launching projects in beauty, fashion, and entertainment. Right, and for many of you, this being a time of growing your reach your customer, uh, or your fan base, and also growing your knowledge and even spreading your knowledge through media publishing, um, through teaching, um, through touring or traveling the world and working remotely even, um, but overall growing your impact, right? And experiencing changes in your daily life routines in relationship to these new changes in your life, right? That's absolutely um, what I'm getting with this. The third house can absolutely be about your daily routines. Um, so yeah, that's definitely, definitely relevant here. And so we're going to wrap up your reading with your angel number message that came through here. All right, Leo. So your angel number message that came through that was channeled is 422. And this is about practical thinking, security, and building solid foundations for yourselves and others. Mm -hmm. Inner wisdom and patience, application and productivity. Number four also relates to our passions and what motivates us and drives us in our lives. It also relates to the archangels. Yes, so I definitely also want to emphasize that with that, um, with the fourth house being highlighted here, um, it's all about foundation. So that is being emphasized here through this angel number message as well. So number two is about balance and harmony, duality, devotion, cooperation, adaptability. And 22 is a master number, right? It's the master builder number that is also about your dreams materializing, right? And being made manifest based on ancient wisdom and realization. 
And it's about the future and evolution and universal love, personal power and charisma, and also philanthropy, right? And being in service. And wow, that really, really resonates with what I was getting about, you know, something about what it is that you're offering being medicine to the world, okay? So angel number 422 is an important message to do with your personal spirituality and divine life purpose. And it says, your prayers, positive attitude, visualizations, and positive affirmations have been heard. The angels encourage you to maintain faith and trust in yourself and the universal energy energies as the angels are helping you to recognize and acknowledge the divine light within yourself and others. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm laughing because Leo's, I kid you not, in your April horoscopes, there was also this very strong message that was coming through about you know, y'all being witches and y'all using the law of attraction and, you know, magic, you know, mysticism and all of this stuff to your advantage, right? To just really, <laughs> to really help you achieve your goals. And it's like, that is also coming through in this reading. Um, I just, I remembered it and it had me cracking up in your past reading and I'm cracking up in this one too. Cause it's like, I was just getting it so strongly. I'm like, y'all some witches. Okay. All right. So it says your prayers, positive attitude, visualizations, and positive affirmations have been heard. What y'all do is working. <laughs> Tapped in. Okay. Tapped in. Hello, kindred. Hello, kindred. All right. So it says, trust that your desired results will be manifested into fruition in your life and all is going to divine right order. Angel number 422 encourages you to keep pursuing your ideal career and or profession. If you are prompted to begin or expand a spiritually based career practice or profession, the angels will assist with establishing the foundations that will lead to your desired results and long-term success. Working to serve others will continue to manifest all that you want and need in your life. And when you do things you love and put your heart and soul towards achieving your goals, the angels give you guidance and assistance every step of the way. All right, dear Leos, I am getting this message overall that the path is blessed and protected. Go forth and prosper. Okay. I hope that this is super helpful. Definitely like this video and subscribe to the channel and check out the remaining videos I mentioned. Definitely look at those April and March readings. Uh, just go straight to the timestamp for Leos. And then also look at the um, readings included here in this message related to your sun and moon in addition to your rising sign and also any signs where you have celliums as they may also have some medicinal messages for you. Take good care, Leos, and I wish you the best. Hello, dear Virgos. So in terms of the Taurus and Scorpio full moon eclipses that began in 2022, they have been happening in your ninth and your third houses. Okay. And essentially since 2022, when these full moon and new moon eclipses began in these areas, the cosmos have essentially been um, supporting like the transformation, stabilization and expansion of like your work and intimate relationships and partnerships and um, your relational dynamics, um, as well as your transnational reach, influence, and reputation and career via traveling, publishing, um, and connecting and expanding your sales and social media channels, right? And it's also been about sort of facilitating this expanded personal, professional and um, spiritual sort of awareness, right, of different perspectives, philosophies, beliefs, and practices through you essentially engaging wisdom um, 
about diverse topics and wisdom from, you know, diverse social groups, right? And also, especially related to health, wellness, and um, sort of psychological topics, right? Um, throughout so many of the readings, um, I have been picking up how um, many of you have been on this long sort of like health and healing and self-care journey, right? And in terms of the cards that were pulled here in relationship to what um, sort of karmic closures and resolves, um, have the Taurus and Scorpio eclipses sort of been sparking for you, we got the Healer of the Ages card, right? And so that is being reflected here as well as something that will be continuing to sort of like reach a peak um, and uh, closure and resolve for you all. And I think even mastery, right? Because for a lot of you have, I have been picking up that many of you are in the healing and helping professions of some sort, right? And so, um, the other thing that this particular kind of, uh, transit has been doing is it's been sort of like, um, giving you tests, in like your professional communication and negotiation skills. And um, that is also connected to the fact that even the um, eclipses that are going to be happening in uh, Aries and Libra are going to be spotlighting your eighth and your second houses, right? And those are the areas all about um, business and professional relationships and partnerships and contracts, right? And so through the fact that like you have essentially been in a time of like learning, growing, connecting, expanding your networks, um, and um, sort of working on things that are growing your finances in the midst of that, you've already been getting these sort of tests around um, negotiation and like your professional communications, right? And essentially um, the eclipses this year are kind of bringing those things to a peak, right? Um, where essentially you're really going to be sort of reflecting and and I think kind of getting in sort of overall view and, and kind of finding gratitude in the ways that you've been sort of forced to grow in these ways, right? And seeing all of the ways that your professional communication and negotiation skills, in addition to like your well-being practices and your belief systems and like the sort of expansion of like your awareness, how all of these things, right, inform and successfully or unsuccessfully shape your contracts and your career and ensure better outcomes, you know, safety, boundaries, balance, and well-being in your personal life and the lives of those that you care about or even care for, right? And it's it's been about you coming to see how your well-being and conflict resolution skills like just have a direct effect on your professional results and how much better you perform with the loving support of, you know, people like a mentor, um, love partner, um, friends, and even mental health support and mental health professionals, right? And um, yeah, it's with these eclipses um, beginning to spotlight more, more um, your eighth house and your second house, it's going to sort of like continue this journey, right? Um, where healing, um, testing your personal capacity to deal with like professional, professional romantic and professional, um, or rather what I want to say is your capacity to deal with personal romantic and professional traumas or crises, um, 
are going to continue to like be tested and and for you to like have mastery in these areas right and it's going to be about you also opening your mind to you know outside wisdom advice help and you know professional opinions of others you know to problem solve any unexpected problems traumas or crises you know in career operations travel planning and or related to you know your personal health issues or health issues of someone else. And um, this is, you know, whether you yourself are an established health or helping professional or one in training, right? Like scenarios of like asking for a consult from a colleague or a senior professional, right? Around like unique or triggering cases or workshopping ideas or, you know, um, getting a hang of like insurance bill <laughs> billing or um, just in general, right? Um, dealing with unexpected uh, health issues of yourself or others, right? And balancing all of that with like your daily personal and professional like um, routines and scheduling and, and business operations, right? In whatever industry it is that you're in. And, you know, all of this is about generally expressing yourself and negotiating your boundaries and even money and contracts and just conflict resolution, right? It's like, those are the sort of like, um, things that these eclipses are sort of bringing to a close and resolve for you. Um, and also like just sort of sparking a new chapter for you in these areas, because I don't think that these are things that are going to slow down or stop for you anytime soon. Right. Um, the ninth house is, you know, not only about expanding your philosophical worldviews and opportunities to physically travel for career, but also continuing to like deep dive and listen teachings and, um, you know, learn more about uh, the wisdom teachings and even holistic health remedies um, of other cultures and just um, from a diverse array of like uh, points of view. And then the third house um, is all about the house of of writing, right, and communication skills, teaching, and your daily routines, right, and um, essentially you having been forced to sort of like grow in your maturity, responsibility, discipline, and mastery of these areas, right, your communication, time management, scheduling, navigating like dependable transportation and daily routines, and, you know, even having a routine, managing all of these different things at once in this area, whether it's teaching, writing, publishing, podcasting, or even like your own personal journaling routine within your own sort of mental health and self-care journey. Journey, right and just the third house is all about um, significant experiences doing work as someone who is like a sort of speaker right or somebody who works in communications and media um, or someone who's a teacher or a mentor or you know a therapist or um, even an editor or a writer right something like that and like having to essentially um, negotiate and manage all of these different moving parts of a daily, like personal and professional life. Right. And, um, with that eight, the second and the eighth houses being a focus as the lunar nodes move into Aries and, um, Libra, it's going to be about sparking this new journey for you in terms of like financial literacy and financial growth. While that has already sort of been happening for many of you, it's like it's going to be moving to like a new level in the sense of like, um, you know, the second house is all about your sense of personal values and your self-worth and how that's reflected in your net worth and your finances. And, you know, eclipses happening in these two houses are sort of all about um, how your spending reflects your values and, and even your investment and your long-term stability or goals, right? And a kind of like 
you know, put your money where your mouth is, sort of lunation or, or, or eclipsing, right? And, um, you know, being uh, confronted with more money-making opportunities um, to grow your money and um, just perhaps like uh, growing to even a new sort of like financial bracket and, um level of financial literacy and responsibility right and so it's it's all about like beginning this new journey of like how you invest your time your attention and your money wisely and responsibly um this could be about budget it could be about wealth management you know responsible spending but also you know because these um aries and Libra eclipses are also about like rewards and expanded potential. Um, and just, yeah, it's like, it's also going to be about you coming to terms with like your earning potential and trajectory. Um, and, you know, continuing to have these experiences that sort of ask you to be empowered and like negotiating your boundaries and contracts related to pay partnerships, you know, assets and like managing your taxes and just really about you continuing to grow in confidence, right? As your positions of authority and maybe even your levels of responsibility and even like who you're like rubbing elbows with, like continues to expand, right? And, um, yeah, it's just really about you being empowered, seeing yourself as a power figure and um, having that sort of take shape in all of your daily dealings and, you know, essentially things going well for you in that sense, you know, based on, you know, confidence and collaboration and collegiality, right? Sort of mastering those things. And, you know, the other thing too is that the eighth house is all about a new journey of healing, healing trauma, um, exploring topics of sexuality, sexual empowerment. It's also about your relationship to the medical industry and to, um, healthcare, um, transformational healing or healthcare experiences. And from the, you know, cards here, given that we have the healer of the ages card and then also the empress and the temperance cards here reflected, um, related to this question of like what sort of blessed new beginnings will be sort of transpiring for you. Some of this has already started to happen for a lot of you, but it's definitely about, um, you know, transformational, like the sort of stream of consciousness, like insights that I got, like from these cards were like transformational healing or healthcare experiences, like Reiki healing, sound healing, healing practices, homeopathy and alternative medicine remedies, um, tinctures, tinctures, right? Which is related to sound healing, um, healing your gut. Um, transforming your body through balanced, clean diet and exercise. Um, I also, with the temperance and the empress card here, I'm also seeing healing for the queer and the trans community. Um, I'm also seeing graduation or milestone achievement in a degree, um, or especially if you work in the health or helping professions. But it's also about you coming to uh, expand your understanding of your a role as a healer through your own personal experiences, but also through the things that you're learning, the knowledge and wisdom that you've gathered and the ways that you share wisdom with others, right? Um, this is also about um, uh, creative projects and commercial ventures, right? Um, continuing to grow and expand with this imprint and the temperance card, right? Through, you know, like successful collaborations, um, travel, also you sort of integrating or combining, you know, different talents and niches, um, either through your collaborations with others, but overall, even in terms of like you continuing to grow and hone your own sort of multi-talented, like creative skills, right? And and shaping a sort of career as this sort of multi-talented creative entrepreneur. And um, yeah, just continuing to grow your career into something unique, right? And that being reflected in 
that being a reflection of your values and your own personal healing journey and um, you sharing all of that with others, right? And it, again, continuing to like affect the gains and the losses, right, in your career and uh, in your finances, right? I think that for some of you, um, the temperance and the empress card here are also about um, collaboration and mutual um, assets or partnership in the sense of like even your romantic life, right? And um, in addition to like uh, this indicating, you know, that this has been and will continue to be a time where uh, faded, like, people sort of like land in your life um, in terms of like mentors, thought leaders, experts, doctors, medical professionals, and even business opportunities, like all of these sort of faded, faded partnerships and people like landing in your life. I think this is also about uh, romance, right? And for a lot of you, it's about deepening committed romantic relationships that you're in, but also, um, you know, and, and that deepening commitment being in the sense of like, you know, um, progressing the relationship to a space of like having shared assets, like owning property together, uh, conjoined finances and um, children and pets and all of these things that you can share with another. But it's also about, um, for others of you, like, because the eighth house is, is you know about how these drastic transformations can go in the area of like um you know huge partnerships but also huge separations huge gains and also huge losses i think that for some of you it could even be um a change in like your your desires and your desire to continue in certain partnerships and even romantic relationships, right? Um, for some of you, these chances are going to be the beginning of a divorce or a separation. Um, for some of you, it's going to be um, the start of a new cycle of like sexual empowerment and, you know, body positivity, even considering or recovering from surgery, Um related to health or even just like cosmetic changes that you want to, um, make, right. Um, and this could be you or either you having people close to you experience some of these things as well, like with that eighth house and with partnership and relationships just being emphasized so much for you all with these particular eclipses, right. Um, and given, you know, your the the particular houses that they are also taking place in for you all right and so um yeah i it would i would be remiss if i didn't you know mention that as well as this other side of things um in terms of like things that could be reaching your peak and you know these sort of drastic you know sort of changes that could happen um given that the eighth house is something that is being activated and has been activated for some of you, you know, for a very long time. Um, I read in the sense of considering um, astrology from an integral perspective, meaning I, I understand it and I read it from both the uh, Vedic and um, the tropical Western astrology perspective, right? And so in that way, some of the things that I'm talking about are things that some of you all have already been experiencing. For some of you, they are things that are about to spark and will be transpiring for you, <laughs> you know, for the next, like, however many more months, right, and remainder of the year. But in general, again, right, these eclipses are going to be bringing, um, you know, a close to some difficult karmic chapters, right, liberating end and, you know, sparking new cycles, you know, in, in other ways, right? That could be positive or negative in these areas, but ultimately definitely testing you all um, in your ability to sort of like master your crisis response and then also continuing to expand your potential through partnership, right? And yeah.
and your ability to just like balance everything. The overarching message for you all is just bringing everything into balance in your health, your daily routines, and management of your finances, right? And so we're going to wrap up this reading by reading your angel number message, okay? The number angel number message that is specific to you all and the angel number message that came through for you all is 433 okay and so it is about your effort and will patience and persistence realistic values ability and stability service and devotion practicality and responsibility building solid foundations and achieving the positive results Absolutely. And it's also about your growth and expansion, your self-expression, creativity, communication and self-expression, and joy and optimism, understanding and inner wisdom, spiritual awakening and upliftment. Yes, and it is a powerful message that you are fully supported, surrounded, and loved by the angels and higher beings of the spiritual realms. You have toiled long and hard, and your angels want you to know you have successfully manifested prosperity and abundance into your life. So be open to continuing to receive your well-earned rewards and blessings and maintain a positive attitude and outlook to continue manifesting positive abundance into your life. Use your natural positive attributes to uplift others as you purposefully work towards attaining your goals and desires, whatever they may be. Be flexible and loving and bring joy to the lives of others as when you live your life with love and light. You manifest positive energies and auspicious circumstances into your life. Be a blessing to others and you will feel blessed in return. And this number may also suggest that a timely opportunity or situation brings many pieces of the puzzle together for you. You have learned many invaluable lessons and have been patient and determined in your efforts. And now is the time to reap your rewards. Yes, Virgos, this is absolutely aligned with everything that came through in the stars and the cards and other psychic messages. Okay, so I wish you continued success. Continue to take care of yourselves. Subscribe and like this video and check out the remaining videos on this channel and the remaining videos or readings included in this reading related to your sun, your moon sign, and any signs in which you have stelliums in your chart. Take good care. Hello, dear Libras. So the sort of overarching theme of your reading is about this sort of journey that uh, the Taurus and Scorpio eclipses initiated in 2022 that will continue throughout 2023 and into 2024 with the Aries and Libra eclipses that are about this uh, sort of cycle of you being faced with these lessons in love and war and this journey of how you must love yourself to love anybody else, right? And this is absolutely due to the fact that the Taurus and Scorpio eclipses have been um, sparking, activating um, your eighth and your second houses, while these um, eclipses that are now beginning in Aries and in your sign are also about your seventh and your first houses, right? And so to be quite honest, um, everything that was mentioned in the general and collective reading um, in terms of the astrology predictions and just the guidance and advice um, is absolutely personal for you all um, given your own natal chart, right? And the relationship of, you know, Libras to the Taurus and Scorpio and Aries zodiac signs, you know, naturally. Aries is your sister sign and um, you are the sign that is related to partnership and your sister sign is that sign is that is all about personal power and authority and you know the eighth and the second houses the natural houses in which the taurus and scorpio polarities rule um are also in your money houses like naturally and um essentially 
also bring up these tensions around, you know, independence and personal power versus uh, codependency and shared resources, right? And, you know, that relationship between your self-worth, you know, and your own personal values, right? Affecting, you know, how strong um, all of these things are for you, right? Your personal independence and also your net worth and your finances, right? So in general, right, since the Taurus and Scorpio eclipses began in 2022 and also, you know, like having this huge uh, transit through Aries in terms of Jupiter moving through Aries, it's like it has been such a powerful and transformative time for you. Um, on behalf of the stars and so so much has changed and is still in transformation in terms of like your committed love partners um you know choices in creative business partners right and you revising and expanding aspects of like your enterprises right and seeing rewards from these things but also continuing to navigate any tensions right and maybe even any burnout right um and uh yeah, and growth, right? And many of you are considering, you know, all of the ways to continue to expand your commercial ventures um, and, and you know, your relationship to fashion and um, industries related to fashion, home goods, and lifestyle, right? And um, these transits are also about your transformation of your body and your self-image, your self-confidence. And, you know, generally this sort of journey of you still claiming and rebuilding your identity, your self-worth, your assets, and your abundance, your independence, and just sort of a vision, right, of your legacy and your sense of self that is, you know, perhaps separate from longstanding, you know, codependent relationships or past relationships generally, um, and even toxic projections and reputations from your past. And right. And it's like, um, these transits are also about, uh, you know, your reputation and issues in your romantic life and even legal problems, right? Because you are the sign that rules, uh, legal issues while, um, any activations in your seventh house, so any big activations through the sign of Aries are also about, <laughs> you know, um, legal issues perhaps arising as well. And um, just diplomacy, right? And navigating self-advocacy and, and being an empowered person who's decisive and who has to make executive decisions while also trying to uh, work collaboratively with others, right? Just that tension, right? And um, in general, uh, I have sensed this as well. It's like some of this is just about um, your relationship to um, masculinity in general, right? Your relationship to masculine energy, um, given that, you know, Aries is the sort of divine masculine sign, right? And it rules over your house of relationships and partnerships. And so, um, there's absolutely a sort of like invitation, right? For you to, um, continue to evaluate how your own confidence and your integrated masculine and feminine energy, or even how the lack of that sort of integration could be related to, you know, like um, childhood wounds or father issues or just longstanding codependency in terms of your familial relationships, like um, looking at, you know, just the daddy wound, the, the father issues wound, you know, um, and how that could be playing out in your relationship to your personal authority in your relationship to, um, the sort of centrality of relationships in your life, right? And collaboration in your life, right? Um, versus, you know, independence, right? And how these things continue to shape your choices and any issues or um, even your money, right? All of these things, right? And it's going to vary for a lot of you, but in general, there is just um, a sort of, a sort of uh, invitation you know, to just really, really 
look at all of these things, like just big personal, political and partnership choices and patterns um, and how these things affect your home and family life, your finances, um, in your career even, right? And just mastering certain lessons. Um, I think in general, right, this is going to be about a time of you coming to, you know, a space of kind of, you know, really facing these things and kind of coming to a space of just uh, sort of reflection, deeper reflection. Um, and that, and like certain circumstances and events and even crises in your life sort of arising to force you to kind of like put a microscope and do some deep diving and um, healing of these things, right? So in terms of the cards that we got for you all, um, we definitely got the second chakra card here um, and the envy card in reverse that came out in relationship to this question in terms of like what sort of closures and resolves, excuse me, are the eclipses um, sort of sparking for you this year during eclipse season? And, you know, all of those things that I just mentioned are absolutely related to the second chakra, the sacral chakra, right? It's about doing that, that deep, um, that deep interrogation of like your personal values, your self-worth, um, and also, you know, like any sort of trauma and core wounds that could be consciously and unconsciously sort of like impacting these things. Right. Um, and in general too, I think that because the, um, Full moon eclipses in particular, the Scorpio full moon is all about like tests of spirit, strength, maturity, and character, and about like this sort of liberating into difficult karmic chapters at the same time as there could also be, you know, um, these sort of things that are sparked in your life related to, um, you know, losses and gains and, um, your relationship to disclosure, health, healthcare, scandal, um, but also like surgery and like, um, the medical industry. I think that, um, this eclipse season is definitely going to be continuing to spotlight this sort of journey for you of, I gotta be honest, when I pull the cards, it, it just seems like the self-love journey, right? Of um, resolving some self-hate in terms of the cards that we pulled here, right? In terms of what is also, what sort of blessed new beginning is going to be sparked for you with the um, new moon eclipses, spotlighting your seventh and your first house. It's going to be a mix of all of these things that I mentioned already, but you being forced to kind of like dig deeper and like really resolve um, some self-hate, do shadow work. Um, from the cards, I got like shadow work and even cosmetic work um, to fix things that you disliked about yourself and even envy about others. It's going to be putting a spotlight on, on this, right? Um, but also like this sort of invitation and suggestion, right? To continue to question how much value you put on money, on the body and external appearances and validations, you know, to feel whole and secure in yourself. And it's like, um, because these things don't fill the void of soul work, right? Um, coming into alignment, like the lover's card or becoming the king of cups, you know, based on coming into alignment, right? And healing, you know, those deeper sort of emotional wounds. And it's like, these things um, can absolutely be affirming and be helpful, but these things don't fill the void of soul work, right? Or even completely remedy self-hate, right? Or, or envy, right? And you trying to attain um, something within yourself that you envy um, or see in others, right? And so, you know, in fact, you know, these, these things like, um, 
trying to fix the external without fixing the internal can spark, you know, toxic cycles of kind of making those voids even deeper, right? And creating greater fragmentation in your self-concept or even just a shallow self-concept, right? And I I picked up on this um of course through the readings over over um time through due to me like reading and and seeing and sensing what the Taurus and Scorpio eclipses have kind of been sparking for you all. Um, but there is also a recent video that I did for you all here that was titled something like Executive Sur Surgical Decisions. Um, and so that reading on the channel could also be um, useful in some way, could have some additional wisdom that, of course, I can't recall in the moment. Um, but there's definitely a journey beginning and ending and even deepening for you around coming into alignment with self, mind, body, and spirit, right? Despite external judgment. And for some of you, this is about gender and sexuality, right? This is about um, gender confirmation surgeries even, right? And But still um, continuing to be invited to dig deeper and to really do the deeper soul work um, to remedy any issues of self-hate or um, a sort of fragmented sense of self or your self-concept, right? And um, because they're not mutually exclusive, it doesn't have to be, you know, um, this isn't about judgment, right? It absolutely isn't about judgment. Um, this is a queer affirming space. And um, it's just about the fact that the soul work can't be negated at all, right? It can't be negated at all. And in general, um, with the Aries, Aries being like your sister sign, there is and, and, you know, Libra's being sort of ruled by Venus, there is always going to be this sort of like, um, sort of soul less, this sort of like a life lesson of integration for Libras, the people with a lot of Libra in their chart around, um, digging deeper and not over identifying with the body and external appearances and beauty and like just sprinkling Venusian fairy dust on everything right? <laughs> to try to solve problems, right. That are deeper, that are greater, right. Um, just not avoiding the hard stuff. Right. And so because the lover's card is here, I'm also seeing this bottom row of cards about, um, how, um, there's also some something here about, you know, realizing how you may have projected your insecurities on others in your past relationships or even chose relationships from a space of insecurity or even envy, right? Like trying to fill a void or be in relationship to a likeness that you lacked and secretly coveted, right? Or envied, right? And maybe being honest and being able to see how those relationships failed because of that. Um, and I just, in general, I see this as 2023 and these eclipses continuing to spark, you know, this journey of you coming to a place of self-acceptance, right? That emboldens you to, you know, break off any codependent relationships or, you know, even make a move to deepen a current commitment or reconcile a past failed one, right? And hoping that your growth is something that can create a better outcome for you now. Um, you being able to give from a full cup and from this really independent and integrated sense of self, right? So those are the readings, the sort of like messages that I was getting from the cards. And then we have the cardinal moon card here that says, be bold and make the first move. I'm also getting that in general, you know, Libras are a cardinal sign and your sister sign Aries is also a cardinal sign. And so in general, this is about a journey of empowerment for you. And, um, yeah, again, like I mentioned, lessons in love and war. So we're going to round out your reading with your angel number message. And your angel number that came through is the number 455. Okay, so 
Number four is about working determinedly towards achieving goals and aspirations. It tells of hard work and effort, building solid foundations, stability and practicality, system and order, honesty and integrity, and passion and drive. It is also the number five is about encouragement to be true to ourselves and live our lives accordingly. And it resonates with personal freedom and making positive life choices and important changes. Yes, the lover's card is also indicative of um, coming to a crossroads and having events and, and crises and things arise that force you or even like incredible opportunities arise right where it's like you're going to be faced with making important decisions that have long-term effects right so the again right the angel numbers absolutely mirroring the stars and the cards here all right so this speaks of important changes right um variety versatility adaptability resourcefulness motivation and progress and it's a message that life choices and changes that you are currently experiencing or that will come up for you sparked by these eclipses and these portals um they've been brought about by the hard work you've put towards your life path and soul purpose so look upon them as blessings as new changes and opportunities will bring about auspicious circumstances for you continue to listen to your intuition and guidance from the angels for directions and instructions of your next steps and maintain a positive attitude about any new entering your life and keep an open mind as to the opportunities presenting to you Keep in mind that everything happens for a reason. Nothing happens by chance. And so even though the reasons for the changes may not be clear at this time, trust that all will fall into place for you. These changes have come about so that you can break free from old restraints and constraints and freely pursue your soul mission and life purpose as a spiritual being. Angel number 455 assures you that you are being supported and guided by the angels through important and necessary life changes. Trust and follow their guidance and know that these changes are for your highest good. Changes and long-term results will lead to answers to your prayers. And lastly, it does not matter what other people say. It is how you react and what you choose to believe about yourself that matters. Do things the way that suits you and find your own niche. Okay, Libras, I wish you much success, love, and prosperity. With these transits and beyond definitely take a moment to subscribe to this channel and like this video check out the remaining readings in this video related to your sun and moon sign and uh, any signs in which you have stelliums take good care of yourselves hello dear scorpios so um since 2022 right these eclipses have truly truly been eclipsing your life and essentially tasking you with mastering a new normal and just in every aspect of your life you know in terms of like shaping a new sense of identity taking on new roles right um and even questioning you know your sense of identity you know and how they are shaped by roles that you take on and maybe have taken on, right, in your core relationships, relationships with children, and also in your career, right, um, and career opportunities specifically related to teaching, spirituality, occult studies, or healing, or being in the helping or healthcare professions, right, and sort of navigating, um, the sort of tensions of you being the pillar of support in your family and other relationships, having to navigate boundaries, right, in these relationships, um, family, right, even uh, financial codependencies or relationships with, you know, partners and colleagues, right, and, you know, how being a pillar in these relationships um, affect your ability to dedicate time and energy to your personal self-care, right? And your growth and maturity and your independence, right? You being a leader, right? And even um, starting independent enterprises, right, of interest. Um, and in general, a lot of it has been about your leadership abilities, right? Given that the first and the seventh houses have been highlighted, right? That's the house of identity. Seventh house is the house of... Um, you know, partnerships and relationships and even love, right? And um, there's, there's 
something here that has been coming up in the, you know, Scorpio readings about, you know, having to, you know, learn these hard lessons about, um, you know, overgiving and staying too long in networks and even positions um, that are toxic or even romantic relationships, any kind of relationship, right? Staying too long in them um, if they're toxic, right? And if they do not honor or respect or reciprocate your worth, right? Um, and any, you know, sort of like crises, traumatic endings, or even, you know, new beginnings being about forcing you to grow, you know, into the sort of independent leader that you are supposed to be, right? It's about independent leadership. It's about um, your role, the roles that you take on with others, or even entrepreneurship and personal power and authority, right? And just clarity around what it is that you want, how you advocate for it, and kind of navigating these sort of giver and taker and matcher dynamics in your relationships, right? And breaking any cycles, right? Um, related to any of your relationships where you um, essentially experience like unrewarding or asymmetrical loyalties and just like uneven power dynamics or even disrespect, right? Um, or just not mutual respect, right? Or your energy being matched and vice versa, right? Um, what you also bring to the table, right? In terms of how well you work with others um, and the sort of dynamics that you establish, right, um, in your relationships. And, you know, um, there's something here about, you know, you growing your um, organizational leader skills, right, and, you know, shaping your daily life, you know, in to a sort of life that grants you sovereignty in a way, it grants you sovereignty, right? Um, and independence just in a new way, right? And you just kind of being asked to reevaluate um, and also heal any wounds and from relationships, right? And and to process any sadness, but also burnout and fatigue, right? From um, a major chapter in your life where um, maybe some things were revealed, right? And maybe you experienced some dynamic changes in key relationships or ending of a chapter in a professional cycle, right? And, you know, with the new moon eclipses spotlighting your sixth and your 12th houses is like there's something about um you beginning a new cycle in your um your career and just in general your relationship to working for yourself working with others being self-employed and even employing others and again, just navigating leadership, independence, and personal power dynamics, right? And also being able to discern, right, um, people who do not have your best interests, you know, at heart, right? People who may be secret enemies, right? And um, I'm definitely seeing something about, you know, going your own way and like you using the divine wisdom from your past personal and professional relationships for this new chapter, right? Where you're going to be attracting, magnetizing, leading, and living a more sovereign life, right? And, you know, bringing in, drawing in more rewarding and aligned relationships, right? And, um, with the divine wisdom card showing up here, it's also about, you know, self-care, right? And this balance between how much you give uh, to others versus how much you, you know, prioritize yourself, right? And again, this just being, because this king of wands is facing away from the four of wands and that being essentially the divine wisdom, it's like for a lot of you who do 
do any work in the healing and helping um, healthcare or even esoteric and spiritual uh, lifestyle sort of communities, it is absolutely about how you have to prioritize yourself in order to be a good leader or to be good for anybody else, right? And I think in general, if there has been an extreme where, um, you know, yeah, where you fall on either side of this, like overgiving or also even not giving enough, um, or, you know, not looking at your collaborative leadership skills critically, um, then, you know, these eclipses are about asking you to interrogate these things and bring them into alignment in some way, right? And you're receiving divine wisdom, you know, from all of it, right? So that, you know, you have an incredible, credible year, right? Experiencing a new you, a new normal, having blessed new beginnings and, you know, being able to um, just have, I think, equality, fairness in all of your relationships, right? And so the angel number message that we got for you all to round out your reading is the angel number 519. Random number, I know, but that's how spirit works. Um, I get these channeled numbers at the top of your reading before I even pull the cards, and then I wait to read them um, as I'm reading them to you. So they're also new, and it is just pure channeling. All right, so 519. This number is composed of the numbers 5, 1, and 9, where 9 resonates with major life changes, making important choices and decisions, promotion and advancements, wow, adaptability and versatility, adventure and life lessons learned through experience. This has been the reoccurring message for you all, Scorpios. Every reading that I've been doing for the Scorpios has been about like... <laughs> Let go, embrace the change and the uncertainty. It's all right, surrender to the mystery. Don't be afraid of the new that is trying to come in your life. You gotta let the new in, right? <laughs> and so number one is also this number that is about new beginnings. It's about um, initiative and inspiration. It says self-leadership and assertiveness, striving forward and progress. Wow, achievement and success, attainment and fulfillment. And it says to step out of your comfort zone <laughs> and create your own reality. All right. And nine adds its influence of leading by positive example. Wow. Philanthropy and light working. It's about the concept of karma, spiritual enlightenment, and universal spiritual laws. And we have divine wisdom here and we have Isis showing up. So absolutely, absolutely. Nine is also just about, you know, endings, closures, and conclusions. And so 519 is a message to follow your intuition. Go with the flow of the changes taking place in your life as they are appearing for your benefit and will present new opportunities that will advance you along your spiritual and material and physical paths. Wow, I couldn't have said it any better. In order for positive changes to manifest in your life, it's important to release the past, release and let go of the old and know that it has served an important function while in your life. Invite in the new and detach from the old with love and gratitude. Uh, Scorpios, I'm going to definitely encourage you to watch the uh, 2023 um, spiritual advice reading here on the channel that was about just giving overall advice for the year. And this particular message came up. Absolutely. That was about um, blessing your past, right? Releasing the past with gratitude and not thinking that any losses or you not achieving the particular um, sort of rewards or promotions or pinnacles of success in certain industries or in certain networks or with certain relationships or jobs, like that, that means that, uh, the work was all for nothing, right? It's like, no, it served an important function in your life, right? But you are being asked to invite in the new and detach from the old, all right? So this says, release old shackles of restraint to make room for the new. Stay positive about yourself, your life, and your future. If you've recently gone through a job loss or end of a relationship, expect it to be replaced with something better suited. 
I cannot make this up. Trust that the angels in universe are working in your favor and new opportunities will present in the very near future. Live your life as a positive example to others as you have the abilities and talents to lead and guide others in positive ways. Put your light working skills to good use. The world needs you to shine your light. All right, Scorpios. That is incredible. I have goosebumps. I have chills. Okay. Because this has all just been so spot on and it has been a resounding message. Okay. So I hope that this was helpful. Definitely subscribe to the channel. Like this video. Check out the remaining videos on the channel and also in this reading related to your sun, moon, rising, and any signs where you have stelliums. I wish you all the best. Definitely surrender and Invite in all of the good things that are trying to find you. Take good care. Hello, dear Sag. So I have to say, Sagittarius, that um, you absolutely need to look at the Sagittarius 2023 spiritual advice reading here on the channel. Um, and even take a look at the March and the April horoscope readings for you guys. Um, even if you just like go straight to the timestamp for Sagittarius, but so much of, um, what has been coming through in those readings is here again in this one, right? And that's absolutely just because the effects of the eclipses have this sort of like long drawn out duration, right? It's a portal, right? Where it's about work, you know, on, you know, certain lessons and integration and mastery of certain things by the same sort of like repeating um, sort of issues or just like a long standing issue, right? And so for you all, I have to say when I pulled the cards, right, um, I, the way that I did it, the first two cards, um, the door to personal healing and happiness and then adjacent possibilities in reverse, um, those are the cards I pulled out in relationship to this question of what is coming to a closure and resolve for you. And then um, when I pulled the bottom two cards directly below that, the Knight of Cups and the Ten of Cups, um, related to this question of like what less new beginnings are being sparked for the Sagittarius Collective. I just had like this big sigh of relief. Like it was just like a big sigh of relief that just like, just completely like overcame my body. And then right after that, um, I pulled the take time to breathe out card. Right. So, <laughs> um, there's, there's a lot there. Right. And part of this is about in general, like these eclipses are going to be bringing you so much relief that is going to be like a sigh of relief in this long journey of you trying to reach, feel this sense of personal happiness from your personal healing, right? And um, any struggles that you may have had, like healing trauma, or balancing your mental and emotional and psychological health, right? During a time of transition. And um, that's what so many of the readings here have been picking up for you all, right? And it's like, you know, um, part of this is due to the fact that the Taurus and Scorpio eclipses have been, uh, you know, like all up and through your sixth and your twelfth houses. And that is absolutely about your uh, mental health, your psychological health, um, your relationship to psychology and mental health support. And, um, you even having mental and emotional and mystical experiences and you digging up a lot of unconscious trauma to heal, you facing a lot of, um, tests of faith and, um, change, especially in your career, because the sixth house is about career. It's about um, workplace dynamics and that balance between work and life, like work-life balance and um, your ability to work with colleagues, right? And um, so much of these changes, all of these things that have been sparking, the seeking, the seeking balance, 
the mental, emotional health, all of these things. All of it has been about the eclipse season trying to um, lead you to research more about supernatural phenomena, to heal grief um, and trauma and any survivor's guilt from losses and even your own trauma or even witnessing the trauma of others in relationship to the ways that your life is continuing to grow and expand and you experience a lot of positive things, <laughs> right? Um, and um, about you being forced to learn more about supernatural phenomena and what it means to be an empath and a highly sensitive because you are one, right? And everything about everything being about trying to force you to really commit to this holistic spiritual wellness um, lifestyle, really, where you're committing to a healthier diet, you're building a solid spiritual sense of self, where you are committing to rituals to help you sustain your holistic health through alternative health and spirituality, right? And um, all of that to help you also master your new workload. Um, so that you can experience the success, this Ten of Cups, right? All of the beauty and wonder in this door to personal healing and happiness card here, right? Um, that has been on the table for you. And um, it's also about, you know, the this these eclipses um, definitely helping you to get to a space of improved mental health where you're really going to feel that sigh of relief. I have to tell you that so much of the astrology has been like, it's been a recipe for challenges to mental health for you all. Right. Um, so you're not crazy. And the things that you have been experiencing are cosmic. Like it's cosmic. Like it is as above, so below. Right. In some very real ways. Right. <laughs> and so much of everything that has been happening has been also about forcing you to understand how connected you are to the cosmos and how you are an empath and a highly sensitive, right? And the truth is, is that you're like having your 12th house be ruled by Scorpio is like, that's, that's, that's you being an empath. And that's also you like being highly sensitive and like not even realizing the extent of it. Um, and you actually having such a high ability to internalize people's darkness and subtle truths without knowing, right? Without understanding how all of the psychic and energetic de debris that you sometimes feel and think is your own is also not always your own. Some of it is about you empathing things through the gut. Um, you internalizing darkness that isn't yours, right? And, um, not really knowing how to separate your stuff from others, right? Um, and you also not always having the best tools in the past to transmute that energy and to understand that energy, right? And, um, some of that affecting your relationship to your creative outlets, it inspiring your, your creative outlets, but it also inspiring your relationship to food. That isn't always the best for you, right? Um, and, you know, emotional armor and just depression, health issues, um, heaviness, right? And you thinking that so much of that energy transfer of those dark feelings and that heaviness is a reflection of you, right? And you internalizing those feelings about yourself and it also being so mismatched from how you are received and perceived in the eyes of others because everybody else sees how incredible you are. Everybody else sees you truly in your power and your beauty and see how all of your imperfections are like these superpowers, right? Um, in these ways that seem and feel crippling to you a lot of the times, right? And so it's about you accepting, understanding these truths about you and taking care of yourself in the ways that truly reflect who you are, right? As a star seed, <laughs> to be quite honest. And um, so with the big sigh of release, um, the big sigh of relief, I mean, um, 
some of that is about, you know, this message that I got that breath work and yoga are things that you need to continue to utilize for release and for your continued personal healing and happiness, right? Um, and I'm also seeing the cards here, the Knight of Cups and the Ten of Cups is about, you know, um, supportive relationships, right? And this being, you know, these eclipses, uh, we have this give us moon card here that says you're very close to achieving your goals. Like these eclipses are about you um, gearing up for certain launches, launching projects into the world, and also you getting positive reception, right? You celebrating accomplishments with people that you love. And in general, you finding your tribe, finding love, but also it's about you finding healers and answers to any mental and psychological health issues or just um, understanding of mental and psychological health states, states of consciousness, understandings of any supernatural phenomena phenomena you've experienced <laughs> because that has all been on the table for you all in general but um yeah in general the new moon eclipse is all about these blessed new beginnings in your fifth and your 11th houses of creativity of love of celebration of success of you launching your creative projects um of you having really supportive working and personal um, relationships, right? And you just really coming to see that, right? And some of that is about you getting over this cliff. Like you look at the Knight of Cups, it's like these cliffs, these, these, uh, mountains and these things in the background. Right. Um, it's like you getting over this hump of your mental health issues, whereas like the moon, these, the, the cloudy, the depressiveness, the, the, all of these ways that you haven't been able to see clearly or even feel, um, clear and uplifted, um, how all of that has been getting in the way of you being able to see just how supported and loved you are, um, and has been causing you a lot of doubts about your ability to successfully complete certain things, but it's like, you will do it and you're gonna like reach the finish line. You're gonna be able to celebrate. Um, and things are just going to go really, really well for you, right? It's going to be about rewards for work well done. And it is 3.33. And so I'm going to stop the reading there. Um, and also 11.11 11 on the clock. So yes, blessed do beginnings. Um, the divine has been trying to get your attention. Um, so definitely check out that other reading here on the channel. And I just wish you all so much love and success. I'm rooting for you, Sagittarius. <laughs> Take good care. Hello, dear Capricorns. So in general, the overall sort of theme of your message is about how your hard work is paying off and how that essentially has been about you going your own way, right? There's something here about how the Taurus and Scorpio eclipses since 2022 have been about you navigating, you know, upgrades and evolutions in your identity, your sense of personal power and self-worth and also net worth, right? Um, and even your body image, gender and sexuality and creative expression. And then also navigating how all of this affects your romantic and friend and even familial relationships. And in many ways, this connected web of themes has also been affected by travel or relocation or will be, right? If you plan to relocate, right? And, and how that will bring you new social and romantic relationship prospects, right? And so part of this is due to the fact that the Taurus and Scorpio eclipses have been spotlighting your fifth and your 11th houses, right? The fifth house is all about, um, experiences and practical and spiritual growth opportunities related to your self-expression, um, in terms of romantic life, your sexuality, creative artistry, creative entrepreneurship, um, even uh, spotlighting your relationship with pets and children. While the 11th house is about, you know, expanding your networks, expanding your beliefs, um, and also even about travel and how you do and don't fit in communities. While the new moons, right, um, that will be happening in Aries 
and in Libra are putting a spotlight on your fourth and your 10th houses. And these houses are all about emotional material and professional foundations and sense of security. And so it is absolutely indicating new beginnings in your home and family life, maybe important communications that will happen to heal and reconcile or make peace with some trauma from a core foundational experience or a relationship that had a huge impact on you, right? The emphasis on home with the fourth house could also be about just that deeper personal transformation continuing, right? In terms of feeling more at home in your body, in your sense of identity, after healing core wounds and trauma connected to ancestry or heritage, parents, um, and particularly making peace with um, maybe being someone who breaks conventions and traditions in your family related to what it is that you do for a career, related to your creative expression and artistry, or even your personal gender or sexual identity and beliefs and values and self-expression, right? Um, the cards definitely are about being at, in, in, with these eclipses, right? By the end of 2023, reaching this new space of confident self-expression and, you know, feeling comfortable in the ways that your material and financial security have changed, have leveled up even, right? Um, this could be about buying a new home, new property, or even beginning an entrepreneurial career in real estate or something of the sort. But in any case, it is absolutely about you um, continuing to look at how your journey of personal healing and happiness um, is still in effect and um, has changed your relationships in a really important way, right? Your mobility, your access, right? And um, in general, your hard work paying off, right? Your hard work paying off. And so there is an angel number message for you here to wrap up your reading. And that angel number is 622. Okay, the number six is the number of domesticity and love of home and family. Wow. <laughs> Service to others and selflessness, responsibility and reliability, providing for the self and others, personal willpower, grace, initiative, showing gratitude, problem solving and overcoming obstacles. You can definitely see in the cards here with this Ten of Wands and even with, you know, this first row of cards with the journey card, this person is essentially looking back over their journey, right, of, you know, personal, professional um, success, right, and how that has absolutely shifted their relationships. Um, but, you know, continuing to move forward, the Ten of Wands is also about completion, and it's about, you know, hard work paying off, okay? So 622 is an important message to do with your personal spirituality and life purpose, and you're encouraged to maintain faith and trust in yourself and the universal energies and trust that all of your monetary and material needs will be met. And this is absolutely for those of you who are still on the road to completing certain important projects, right? Um, promotions or bringing certain things through to fruition, right? And so it says, give any fears of lack or loss to the angels for healing and trust that all you need will be provided. Your angels and spirit guides are helping you to recognize and acknowledge the divine light within yourself and others. And it's a positive message of belief, faith, and trust. And your prayers, positive attitude, visualizations, and positive affirmations have been acknowledged. Trust that your desired results will manifest in your life. Stay focused, balanced, and at peace. And know that all is going to divine right order and in divine right time. I'm also getting that um, this is about um, you all having particular, also having particular like notions of what you dreamed of your life looking like um, by the time you reach this point that you're currently at and how it actually looks different from what you initially envisioned. Um, and you also being at this precipice of continuing to kind of like um, re like, come to terms with a new and evolving vision of your life and what you want your life to look and feel like, right? And who will be a part of that, 
right? Because even the people that you imagined reaching certain, like being around you and being a part of your life, as you reach certain milestones and pinnacles of success, it's like that has all changed. Those people are not in your life anymore, right? And so there's a little bit of grief with that. Um, and there's a little bit of like, just making peace with that, right? And continuing to move forward on your journey to personal healing and happiness. So Capricorns, I wish you so much healing and success on your journey. Journey well. Take a moment to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and check out the remaining videos on the channel, particularly your 2023 reading that was sort of similar uh, to this, but has some additional really, really great wisdom. So check those out and I hope that they help. Take good care. Hello, dear Aquarius. So Aquarius, this eclipse astrology is essentially about, you know, confidence being key for you as the card here is saying, um, putting on a brave face, knowing better to do better. Um, Understanding how failure is also the best teacher and this sort of question, right, that the divine is kind of posing for you as you go forward now, which is, wouldn't you rather know what you know now, right? Um, and about there being a need to truly, truly, um, have gratitude in many ways for the possibilities um, that may be opening up for you now based on failures and based on the divine wisdom that you now have to go forward, right? Um, and how so many of your past experiences, any drastic changes, challenges, loss and gains in your foundational relationships or um issues related to your material and professional uh, foundational relationships and foundations and your sense of security in terms of your home life, finances, professional reputation and achievements, just about how like all of those things um, have given you wisdom now that you can use to move forward, right? And it's about you forgiving yourself for what you didn't know before, the ways that you didn't trust your intuition or the ways that you were not in touch with your intuition in order to make um, certain informed decisions, but that you now understand, right? Um, and that can help you moving forward, right? Um, and this is because the Taurus and Scorpio eclipses have essentially been activating your fourth and your 10th house, right? Wow, you know, Saturn and Pluto have also been in the mix. So definitely, definitely check out those readings as Saturn and Pluto um, have been you know, transiting your sign, right? So they have had huge impacts and a part of this, in addition to the eclipse having activated these houses. So take a look at those readings um, that are here on the channel, um, the Saturn and Pluto transit reading, and also in general, the 2023 spiritual advice reading that is here that is also about how trauma and drama and changes, right, have kind of been divinely orchestrated and also a product of these transits, right? So there's some more wisdom there. But in general, in terms of what the eclipse astrology is also um, orchestrating, it's like it may be bringing some of these issues to a close, right? A, a cycle of those, but also beginning a new cycle, right? Of you um, essentially overcoming these things, um, putting yourself back out there in a new way, um, and trying to essentially rebuild your professional reputation and uh, reach certain goals, new achievements and ambitions that you have and that you're setting for yourself, right? And this is absolutely related to the fact that the Aries and the Libra new moon eclipses are going to be spotlighting your third and your ninth houses, right? And these shine a light on the areas of professional writing, teaching, publishing of your projects, communications, right? Um, social media, uh, maybe shocking communications, right? But also even the areas of product development and shipping and um, also um, essentially you expanding your network, right? In some way and your reach, right? Your transnational reach, um, 
expanded personal, professional, and even spiritual perspectives, philosophies, and beliefs and practices based on the wisdom of your past experiences, but also based on, you know, you going forward and um, building new relationships or having different different boundaries, right? Um, so that you ensure better outcomes, right, in all of your endeavors, right? There is absolutely something here about um, something that I picked on in one of your recent readings, which is about you coming into uh, a sort of new sense of self based on like your you coming into a new a new sort of uh, sense of voice, right? That is more authentic and unreliant on collaborations or on the influences of others, right? You striking out on your own in a new way. Um, and also you continuing to sort of navigate how you, how working relationships and also you striking out on your own in certain ways created tensions in certain partnerships, right? Tense working relationships, right? And, um, you essentially trying to move on from that, right? And, um, wait for the outcome of something. This is, oh, outcome. I'm also getting the word come back, right? This is something about a comeback right, from challenges um, in these past areas, right, related to the Taurus and Scorpio eclipses, spotlighting the fourth and the tenth houses, right, and um, with the third and the ninth houses, I'm also getting something here about uh, relationships with foreigners. Also, this is about your relationship to travel and also to higher education. I mentioned that, but also in general, um, you something about order fulfillment, pre-orders, products selling out, you having success in business endeavors that exceed your expectations, perhaps after a period of challenge, right? And you having conflict, right? And some ups and downs, right? Um, but in general, for many of you, these eclipses are going to be sparking a time of you growing your reach, right? And even your customer or fan bases, growing your knowledge, spreading your knowledge through media and publishing and teaching, and also even touring or traveling the world, working remotely, um, more relationships with foreigners or with long distance relationships, people from different cultures, right? From, from different parts of the world, right? And you growing your impact in many ways too. And how all of this will change your daily life routines. And this is also about you beginning new daily routines, right? That can help you, um, sustain, you know, your work responsibilities and also to continue to grow and integrate this new found, uh, sense of self that is wiser, that is healthier, right? That is living a more holistic life, right? And who has been through things, right? So this is absolutely about, you know, the boomerang effect, right? Taking, you know, some setbacks that, you know, push you forward, right? And how confidence truly is going to be your key to success. So it being important to just have gratitude for the wisdom. All right. So we're going to close this reading out with your angel number that came through and it is the angel number 644 and so six is a number that relates to material and monetary aspects of life it's also about grace and gratitude mm -hmm. love of home family and domesticity compromise stability and poise problem solving and solution finding it also resonates with wisdom and patience Application, endurance, stability, personal drive, ability, and traditional values, and your conviction and building solid foundations. Wow. It encourages you to see yourself in a higher light as your true self. And your angels are helping to boost your self-esteem and belief in yourself. Your life mission requires that you be your authentic self and work at your most brilliance. Stay grounded and focused, knowing that your angels surround and support you as you work on your life purpose and path. The angels caution you from having too much of a focus on the material world. 
They say surrender your worries to them so that they can intervene on your behalf. That is absolutely the chariot, baby. That is the chariot. <laughs> that is the chariot. All right. And it says the energy of stress and worry repels the universal energies of abundance and prosperity. So ask your angels to help you keep a positive frame of mind and optimistic attitude and let the angels work their magic in your life. It says acknowledge the discipline and hard work you have put into your endeavors in the past and know that they will have long-term benefits for you and your loved ones. Take heart that your determination and effort has been well worth your while. Your angels encourage you to keep up the great work. Know that your needs will be met due to diligence and determination to succeed. That is absolutely the chariot. If you really want something in your life, you must put your intention behind it, focus upon it, and work towards it. Be willing to devote time and energy towards achieving your goals and aspirations. And I'm getting this in terms of the personal daily and like lifestyle changes that you're making in your daily life and your bigger professional goals, right? So it says, make them a priority and keep in mind that patience is a stepping stone to wisdom. Wow. Isn't that this bottom row of cards? That is just incredible. And I have chills reading that in terms of the ways that the cards, the stars, and just the raw channeled wisdom all aligns. So I wish you the best Aquarius. Subscribe, like this video, and check out the remaining videos on the channel. Take good care of yourselves. Hello there, Pisces. So for this 2023 eclipse season, um, the Taurus and Scorpio eclipses have essentially been activating your third and your ninth houses. And it essentially um, shines a light on all of the ways that you essentially expand and reap rewards, right, for work done. Right. It shines a light on the expansion of your work in intimate relationships and partnerships and relational dynamics, your transnational reach, influence, and reputation and career, how you expand those via travel, publishing, sales, and social media channels. And it's also about you expanding your mind or having an expanded understanding and awareness. Um, from your personal and professional and spiritual experiences and also engaging in um, connection with different perspectives, philosophies, beliefs, and practices, and engaging the wisdom about diverse social groups, right? While you are also sort of like uh, expanding your awareness um, of health and wellness and psychological topics via like your own personal experiences or um, your connections and work with others, right? And, and in your journey to have work-life balance and sort of personal health and self-care, right? And it definitely also shines a light on the areas of professional writing, teaching, um, publishing of your projects, right? Even shocking communications, it also shines a light on the sort of journey of product development, shipping, manufacturing, um, and how that could be related to um, also experimentation with new technologies, right? Um, it's also about this journey of, you know, whenever I think about the third and the ninth houses and how it is also so focused on like self-expression and creative expression, that is also about what these things reflect from your own sense of self and your self image, right? And, and what you are also attempting to convey about your authentic sense of self and your self image. And it's also about branding, right? Professional branding, right? And, um, expanding your success, um, through your professional endeavors and branding, right? And then these new moon eclipses in Aries and Libra are going to be spotlighting your second and eighth houses, right? And it, it all already, there has already been activation here, right? Based on Jupiter transiting through Aries, right? In this house. And, you know, after having transiting your own sign, right? And so this is all about how your finances right? In addition to like your transnational reach and market success and, 
everything, your net worth, how all of these things have increased, improved, expanded, right? Or changed drastically in a way, right? And, you know, the second house is all about your sense of personal values, self-worth, your net worth, and your finances. And it kind of like put your money where your mouth is, transit, where it's about how your your spending also reflects your values, right? And how you're using your money to invest in long term stability or goals, right? And being, you know, confronted with a lot of money making opportunities to grow your money and shape and you know, sort of put forth your sense of personal values, what it is that you value um through your spending, right? And it's like um it's about, you know, the pressure of investing your time, attention, and money wisely and responsibly in the interest of your long-term goals. And, um, you know, it's about budget, wealth management, financial advisors, and responsible spending. That is absolutely what the second and eighth house sort of polarities and dynamics are all about, um, especially with something like eclipses, right? Where it's like there could be drastic changes, drastic gains, and even losses where, or or um, just events that kind of um, are about bringing wisdom, forcing maturity, wisdom, and mastery, right? In these areas, right? And like the eighth house, it's all about what you own, owe and share of yourself and even of your body, right? In terms of your relationship to childbirth, right? And pregnancy and also your finances, right? And and having shared resources and shared assets in partnerships or even in marriage, right? And um, again, those sorts of negotiations of how what you own and how you share of yourself physically, emotionally, and financially, and about the psychological transformations that can happen due to events, crises, and trauma in your life, right? Um, it could be about your relationship to the medical industry, having medical operations, being in the helping professions, or even, you know, being a witness to um, the sort of like medical or health hardships of someone else, right, um, that you love or care for. The eighth house is always about um, mystery. Also, it's about taboos. It's about investigation in terms of you coming into contact with spiritual and esoteric knowledge or about secrets, right? And um, awakening, right? And I have to say, Pisces, from looking at the cards here, um, giving what I know about the eighth house, um, I'm getting a message here. When I pull the cards, there was just like the stream of consciousness uh, downloads, right? And I got the words paparazzi, right? Looking at the cards, paparazzi, security, privacy, private property, protecting assets. And maybe there being some sort of private investigation into a burglary or a theft. Maybe questions around, you know, whether it was an inside job, right? Um, finding, you know, and maybe there being a private investigation into this, right? And and finding results around the Taurus full moon or three months after this Taurus full moon um, is on the 5th and so of May. And I'm also getting to that uh, Pluto in the 12th house of secret enemies and being the ruler of the 8th house which is about losses and gains that is playing a part here and what in, in terms of like the connection between the astrology and what is coming up here in the cards. Right. Um, so this is definitely about being careful about what you disclose of your whereabouts online. This is about maybe being in the public eye and that may be causing some, um, danger to your privacy. Um, and, uh, you needing to be more diligent about your safety, your security, your boundaries, protecting your assets, um, maybe making you vulnerable for loss. Um, and I'm getting, you know, for Pisces, right? This could be about, you know, feeling torn with how to navigate privacy, safety, and disclosure, you know, as someone who may be a high net worth individual, someone who may have come into a lot of money or uh, have increased uh, finances um, 
you know, because in many ways, it's like your vulnerability has always been important to your ability to connect and share with others, right? And reap abundance, right? Have that returned back to you. But is there's a tension there about it also being a liability, perhaps, and making you a target, right? When you have so much to protect now, right? Loved ones, um, but also your financial and material assets and senses of security, right? With the eighth house, this could also be about setting up trust and estates and wills. And that's definitely also what I'm getting with this Ace of Swords card here, right? It looks like an estate in, a, in many ways. And the Ace of Swords is all about contracts and documents and clarity and making decisions, informed decisions, right? And also advice and advisors, right? To make decisions, right? And so this could even be about being the first to bring in generational wealth in your family or even an inheritance from losing someone. The eighth house is also about loss, right? This could be about losing an important matriarchal figure in a family um, or even vetting accountants and the people close to you, right? There's definitely something about that being all up in the midst, right? And, you know, um, you finding out answers, you know, at some point, you know, uh, sooner or later, right? And you can definitely see, you know, all of this, you know, reflected in the cards here. And so I'm just going to wrap up this reading. You all have to comment. Let me know what happens, how this resonates. Definitely like this video and subscribe. But we're going to wrap up your reading with your angel number message that came through. Okay. So the angel number for you all is 655. All right. And the number six is about the material aspects of life. It's about home, family, and domesticity. It's also about uh, gratitude and grace. It's about compromise. It's about service to others and selflessness. Um, and also that sort of balance between providing for the self and others. It's about personal willpower, finding solutions and overcoming obstacles. While the number five is about life changes and auspicious new opportunities and also making life choices and decisions, right? And learning life lessons through experience. It's about magnetism. I'm also getting, I got the words private eye. Um, in terms of investigation, I think about a magnet. It's somebody literally holding up a magnet to investigate something and that's Everything that I'm getting from this Seven of Swords card here, right? I'm also getting uh, the words here that are also in this angel number message are competitiveness, right? It says adaptability and versatility. We have the journey card here, right? And then individuality and doing things your own way. This number in general, 655, is about major, major changes taking place in your life and how you may be feeling apprehensive or anxious about what is ahead of you. All right. It says, know that these changes are happening to advance you along your life path and soul mission. And you are encouraged to take full advantage of the changes and the new opportunities they will bring. Your prayers and positive affirmations have manifested much needed changes. So trust that they are right for you. And this number is about bringing fresh new energies into your home and family environment. Um, I'm getting that for some of you, if you have experienced something like burglaries and something in your home, it's, it is about forcing you to uh, make some updates in your home and how you protect uh, your home and your family life, right? This is saying that uh, this could indicate a start to a project related to something that you are truly interested in, right? And this is also a journey, um, so a heart-filled journey. Um, following your passions in some way. You can also expect some positive new additions to your home and or family life and or some great news coming your way. And um, there's pregnancy and childbirth. I've been predicting that for the Pisces for a very, very long time. In fact, I predicted this before, um, uh, for instance, before Rihanna revealed her pregnancy at the Super Bowl. I was predicting this for the Pisces, right? <laughs> and I think that reading in particular was also even called like a big reveal. So it's like I was tapped into that. Um, but this is definitely talking about um, living your life, some great news coming your way, um, 
This says, as you live your life true to your own values and personal spirituality, the angels and universal energies will ensure that all your needs are taken care of, leaving you free to pursue the course of action that takes you closer to living your personal truth. Angel number 655 indicates that wonderful changes are taking place and new opportunities will miraculously appear with help from your angels. When you live your life being true to yourself and honest with others, you manifest positive energies and desired results and outcomes. All right. And it says life doesn't get better by chance. It gets better by change. Okay, Pisces. So I hope that that gives you some resonant, you know, insight, but also reassurance, you know, if you are dealing with any sorts of anxieties um, related to home, related to feeling safe, related to travel, related to new opportunities. And again, like I said, navigating that tension between, you know, using the power of your vulnerability and openness and, you know, how you relate to others to continue to advance, you know, and grow your finances and achieve your dreams while also like maintaining your safety, security, and privacy, right? And protecting your assets. All right. So definitely like this video, subscribe to the channel and check out the remaining videos on the channel, especially that Saturn in um, Pisces and uh, Pluto and Aquarius video as it could be super, super helpful. And any other readings for the zodiac signs in this reading where you may have your sun, your moon, in addition to your rising and any stelliums in your chart. Take good care of yourselves and best wishes.